Hello, all. It took my screen a while to uh, come up. I don't know why, so there's a delay, but um, welcome to the movie stream um, where we will be discussing all of our favorite films and franchises from all genres. And I am Collector Man, and I collect and discuss all things entertainment related, including horror. And I have some amazing guests with me tonight. First up is the awesome and very knowledgeable Jennifer Tochi. And from the horror corner, we have Sean Urshan and the king of streams, the Soulless <laughs> Trench Coats. So, hello everyone in the chat. Thank you so much for coming by tonight. Uh, Mr. Bones, Charles, Casey, Mr. Bones, Katie. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Nice morns, he says. <laughs> Internet web coach. Yes, yep. that's Bones. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are epic. <laughs> Hello, Echo. Hello. 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 Echo. Echo. <laughs> echo, echo, echo. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bones. Stop like <laughs> so as I described when we first started, we're just going to be kind of loosely talking about our favorite films and franchises tonight. There's no real order or any structure to the stream. We're just going to be whatever comes to our mind, favorites, childhood favorites, films that made a big impact on us, whatever the case may be. We're just going to talk about them. Anybody in the chat that wants to jump in, let us know. Your favorites, uh, uh, I'll be checking the chat and we'll talk about those as well. Um, but I wanted to uh, sort of start out the stream. Hey, Terry, uh, my cousin's in the chat. Um, so I kind of want to start out the stream talking about a few more recent uh, horror films that I haven't been able to talk about on my channel or get kind of gauge everyone's uh, opinions on. Um, I know Sean in particular is a huge fan of the Halloween franchise. Uh, I haven't really got a chance to talk with you about the Halloween franchise. But uh, one of the ones I wanted to kind of touch on is Halloween Kills. Um, so who who here has seen Halloween Kills? Jennifer, Trenchy, have either of you seen Halloween Kills? I have. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm bad at okay. watching like new new movies. The only I think new movie I've seen in a while was the new Texas Chainsaw. To be honest, I saw that. okay, that's fine. I'm kind of slow getting to around to new movies too. So yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Evil dies tonight. <laughs> so what is the general? So what is the general consensus on um, Halloween Kills with everybody? Um, I just want to throw my opinion out there really quickly. Um, I thought it was a, a tad bit of a mess, um, after Halloween 2018. Um, I thought it just felt like scenes kind of thrown together. I didn't really think that, uh, the character of Tommy Doyle, um, Anthony Michael Hall, I didn't really, I didn't really buy him as a grown up Tommy Doyle. And of course there's the fact that, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't in it that much, but I guess there's, um, a point to that because hopefully she'll be in Halloween ends a lot more. And, um, the, the whole thing with, um, um, uh, the nurse, uh, Sean helped me out. The nurse from the original Marian films. Crane? Yes. Ch yes. Uh, Marion Crane. Yes. Chambers. Um, Sorry, Chambers. yeah. Marion Chambers. Uh, when she, uh, you know, tries to shoot Michael Myers and she's like, this is for Dr. Loomis and she doesn't even get the shot off. That was really disappointing. I mean, she really should have got one in for Dr. Loomis. I mean, come on. She but, um, had a moment of some sort. Yeah. 
So Ben Grimm said, I thought it was good if they cut that hospital scene in the middle. I'd like it a lot more. Um, yeah, I guess you're referring to maybe the the uh, the escaped um, patient yeah. who they all thought was Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just kind of sad, really, you know, when he jumped out the window and everything. I thought of that was silly because uh, earlier in the movie you can see them watching on TV and they show Michael's face what he looks like. So, <laughs> so nobody knows what he looks oh. like. So nobody knows that he's that this guy is not Michael Myers. Come on. Yeah. And oddly enough, I've always had kind of an issue with that with actually seeing Michael Myers' face. Um, yeah. I know that in the first film, we, we see it very briefly, um, but it's kind of in the shadows. It's not really out there. But even in Halloween 2018, when they show like the side of his face and things like that, I just mm -hmm. like to keep it like really um, just not knowing, just not knowing what's under there is how I like it. But yeah. I showed him in here. You like you like to keep the facade up, you know. Mm. You know. Yeah. And I was very disappointed with Anthony and Michael Hall. Yeah, you know, with mm -hmm. him, with as Tommy Doyle because it was like, you know, I, you know, he he. I don't think Tommy Doyle would act as that strong of a person. Mm. Because, because I don't think he would. I don't think you know. And yeah, I definitely think she should have gotten that shot off. I wanted to love Yeah, definitely. More. Yeah. I didn't think it was the most horrible movie ever made, but and I never want to hear "Evil Dies Tonight" chanted in a movie. Again. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they kind of overdid that one, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, just a bit. I thought it so. Was, uh, ben Grimm. Um, oh, go ahead, Sean. I was just gonna say I thought it was kind of odd that. They used Anthony and Michael Hall and not the original guy that played him, where they used yeah. all the other original people. It seems like out of. It just seemed odd. <laughs> like. Yeah, I get, that, I get that maybe some people who haven't acted in 30 years, but. That could be the problem. But I mean, come on, he could have brushed up a little bit and, you know got his stuff together in time for the movie. You know. uh, didn't they bring back the the actor that played the bully in five seconds of the original? I haven't seen it, but I heard that they even got the main actor that played the bully to come back for some reason. His character was, but I don't think it was the original actor. Oh, played. okay. Okay, that's good. I don't then. understand why they would even have him in it. Like, who cares about <laughs> that kid? Like, <laughs> and he's like a pretty big part of the story, too. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, really? So Ben Grimm says, I liked the idea of a street mob, but didn't like what they did with the mob in the hospital. Uh, the whole mob thing, I think, was a lot more organic in Halloween 4. I think I like what they did in Halloween 4 with mm -hmm. the mob thing. I think it just was a little bit too forced um, in this one. And Charles says there were no torches and pitchforks. Uh, he's going back to the old days well with that been. one. And uh, Ben mentioned the iron, of course. Uh, I've seen several <laughs> memes of the iron since then. <laughs> Just and Ben thinks there are more bats. there are more bad Halloween movies than good in the Halloween franchise. Mm. Um, 
I don't know if I I don't know if I would agree with that. Maybe, but the only Halloween film that I absolutely don't like, I would say, is Rob Zombie's Halloween Two, and I really don't care for Halloween Five just because it's so drastically different in tone than four, even though you know some of the same characters come back in and they kill off Rachel and it's just they rushed that one into production and it it suffered from it. Yeah, they did rush that. Probably. <laughs> So uh, before the stream started, I was kind of talking about uh, the new Firestarter movie. If anyone in the chat has seen that, uh, any opinions on that one? Um, I can tell you that my favorite thing about it, was score uh, by John Carpenter. Um, I don't think it. I actually think the score was, yeah, better than the film. I have not seen Firestarter yet. Did he actually? So he actually did the score of that. Yes, John Carpenter did the score for the Firestar. That's why I was really excited about it because I love John Carpenter's uh, compositions. Nice. nice. Casey thought it was okay. Oh, Ben Grimm! I didn't like the cat scene either. Believe me, um. Animal cruelty and animal deaths and horror are something that I don't like. I get that. You said the yeah. fire was badly done, bad CGI and everything? Yeah, yeah. The, the fire was mostly... There were a few scenes of actual fire, but for the most part, it was CGI fire. And the acting was just honestly really bad from all involved like no one no one seemed like they wanted to be there at all and it was just the script was really bad it was really badly written like some of the dialogue was pretty laughable and that's all my opinion of course if anybody else liked it that's fine with me i don't hate on anybody for liking uh something <laughs> that i don't uh yes have cheetah will view they killed the cat so you might want to stay away from the from yeah. uh the fire starter remake Popping the popcorn, Katie, this is from Hobbs. Hey, guys, I am watching while I am at work, but can't comment. Love your channels. We'll rewatch again and follow along while I am working. Boglins. Well, thank you very much, Hobbs. Up, Hobbs? Thank you, Hobbs and Katie. Thank you. Wasn't there a, like, made-for-TV sequel to Firestarter back in the day? Yes, I think there was. Yes, there was. It was uh, Firestarter Rekindled, I believe yeah, is what yeah, it was yeah. called. Right. Yeah. I I've it. heard about it. Yeah, I, I watched it, like it but I can't X remember anything about it. Oh, shit. So it's, it must be very memorable then. <laughs> Nobody remembers. <laughs> I just remember there was one. I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> donuts for Hobbs. Yep. Yeah. Yep, donuts. I believe they also made one of those made-for-TV ones for um, Carrie, didn't they? Yeah, that was a straight remake, yeah. wasn't it? That was pretty good, oh. though. I'm not going to lie. I liked it. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't bad. too bad. Yeah. I'm one of the few people that like the Rage carry too. <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome. They have whale harpoons. They shoot whale, whale harpoons at Carrie or Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> like when she gets mad and like tattoos grow on her body and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So Ben Grimm is saying, I watched Firestarter Rekindled last week. It's on Peacock. It has Charlie in college, and she starts fires every time she gets horny. Wow. Okay. Every time she what? Every time she gets horny. 
apparently. Um, wow. Oh. Maybe I should have watched it back then. That was interesting. Did they play this and song? And Echo Fire said... Twisted Fire Stata. <laughs> Uh, Echo says there was a period of time where you would get uh, TV remakes or sequels to King movies. Um, yeah, yeah, there definitely yeah. was. Like the uh, late '90s, early 2000s, they did um, uh, The Shining. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. The was it that darn one? And I forget because it was that memorable. Now I'm just remembering all the TV movies that Stephen King made. Hmm. Yeah, there were so many. Yeah. I actually like the miniseries um, Rose Red that was based on Stephen King. Uh, that was one of my favorites. Oh, that's like one I haven't seen. Like, I got to check that out. Yeah, it's really good. I thought it was really atmospheric and really well done. I actually and enjoyed... Basement Blues like the TV movie. What was that, Jennifer? I actually enjoyed the stand and it also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Both yeah. Of those. It's definitely stand out. And of course, Salem's Lot was a TV movie, and then Return to Salem's Lot. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm And I heard recently There's that they're going to be making it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going to be a theatrical movie, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Wait, they're doing Salem's Lot again? Yeah. Because I know they did one with Rob Lowe. I haven't seen any version yet. I got to go back and watch the original and stuff. But they, I didn't know they were doing another remake. Mm-hmm. That's right, Toby That's right. Hooper did it. Directed the original. Patrick, I agree. Salem's Lot 79 was really good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably the scariest TV movie. Like, You don't see a lot I did of... Not know... I did not know about Trucks, Echo based on the short story of the same name, which was already made into Maximum Overdrive. I have seen Maximum Overdrive, but I had no idea about trucks. Neither did I. Wow. That's a guilty pleasure for me, too. Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> oh, it's a, a classic. A lot of people Yeah, it's it. a fun one. That movie should win Oscars. You're never going to see performances like that again. Or a Green Goblin truck trying to kill people. <laughs> Hell <Great. yeah. laughs> yep. All right, guy getting fried when he's playing the uh, pinball machine. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. The, or the soda machine where it shoots the, the cans right in the dude's. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> so another movie I kind of wanted to... Oh, go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say I agree with Mr. Bones. So Return was not so great. <laughs> not so great. <laughs> Echo says, have you seen the guy who owns the Green Goblin head after restoring it and takes it to cons? Um, no, I haven't. 
Nice. But that is cool, though. Wow. That's dope. Very cool. So another movie I kind of wanted to touch on is the new Scream, uh, since we're all horror junkies. Um, so what did everyone think of the new Scream movie? I have not watched it yet. Uh, you haven't watched it yet? I've only watched Scream 1. And that's it? And Yes, I'm. I was. I'm very slow to the screen party, and I will only watch them in order. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea, though. To watch yeah. them in order. Yeah. It is technically a sequel or a requel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what is it with uh, movies after Halloween 2018 just calling themselves the original title of the original film? That's mm-hmm. kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. It Why is, not just it call it Scream 5? They're, they're cashing in. Yeah. They're cashing in, man. Bandwagon. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Hello, Hello Jen. Jen. Yeah, but I, I think that's think. why they did that for Scream, to make fun of that. You know, it's like a... A parody of that. Yeah. I enjoyed it for the most part, but I didn't... I thought it was... Um, I didn't like it more than part four. I really liked... Uh, since there was a big gap between uh, Scream 3 and Scream 4, I, I Scream 4 has its problems, and, you know, some people don't like it, but I actually really enjoyed Scream 4. Part of the reason was that was because of uh, Hayden Panettiere's character, and recently they just announced that uh, she is confirmed to be returning for Scream 6, so I'm really happy about that. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was solid. I thought it was pretty much in line with, with the others, you know? Not necessarily better, but it was like another solid screen movie to me. And I, mm-hmm. I think you got to give them credit for that because we didn't have Wes Craven this time. So it's someone new taking on the mantle and I thought they did a pretty solid job. Yeah. That's some good. And I like the, the fact, uh, I like the fact that they, um, had a tribute uh, sort of to Wes in there. One of the characters was named Wes. So I thought that was nice. I think it will help. Patrick is still searching for parts one and four. Those are the parts I have is one and four. (laughs) Well, you should at least Um. see two. Come on. I'm, I keep looking for him. Two is worthy, I think. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy all of them. I mean, you know, you can nitpick, but I enjoy all yeah. of them, really. I think it'll help that I'm not, like, a avid fan, like I am of the Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday 13th movies because I won't be like so picky. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And to the point because I walked out on it chapter one and refused to watch it chapter two because of, it was so false to the book and <laughs> this didn't happen in the book or the movie and that's not Tim Curry <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can get past that huh? yeah I enjoyed the first it movie um you know the CGI was the biggest downfall I thought um Scarsgar did a good job as Pennywise but 
nobody can really beat Tim Curry in any role. You can't replace Tim Curry no matter what, uh, in my opinion. But um, the, the It Part 2, I thought it suffered from the exact same thing as the original uh, with the Part 2, uh, the TV version where the characters are grown up. I just don't think it's as um, as interesting with adults versus Pennywise. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's just more threatening and it makes more sense uh, with the kids versus Pennywise. So I always enjoy the first parts of any adaptations of that. I skipped it because of the bad reviews and like, I just didn't hear much good about it, so I skipped it. I get that. I enjoy both part ones equally. I think they both have strengths and weaknesses. I did not see the new part two because I will eventually, but it's like three hours long. And I'm like, Jesus. That's yeah, it the is thing really long. You hear that it's not good, and you hear a lot of bad things. I'm not gonna waste three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just watch hey, the Jim. library sequence in part two again. <laughs> okay, I guess we should kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this stream. Uh, who wants to open up uh, just talking about one of their favorite movies? Who wants to go first? Any volunteers? I will. Okay, uh, Jennifer, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, uh, I've talked about it before. And it is... Microwave Massacre. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that yet. You haven't seen it? Oh, I don't believe God. I have either. Um, no, nope, but tell us all about it. The man who voices um, Frosty Snowman um, plays a part in the movie of a construction worker whose wife has just gotten one of the new microwaves, one of one of those big, huge new microwaves that came out, and has started making fancy food for him that's dis- disgustingly gross. And so he's taking it to the... Every day he'll, he'll take out his lunch made for him by his wife. And one day he takes out a sandwich with a crab inside of it. And he's getting very frustrated. And one night he comes home drunk. And him and his wife get in a fight. And he wakes up the next morning. And there is food in the refrigerator. And it just tastes yummy. And... Uh, in the microwave. Yeah, it's in the microwave. And it just, the meat tastes wonderful. And he thinks his wife knows how to cook. And then he finds her head. So he has <laughs> cooked her in the microwave. <laughs> 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 and he starts cooking women in this microwave. <laughs> And it's cooking for his friends at the at the and too. <laughs> it's it's a little bit trashy this making. <laughs> um, oh, I need to see this. It 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 it. It, you know, and it lets you know that it's going to be trash because um, the opening thing you see is like he's walking down the street and it's uh, a close up on her, her breath and then on it flashes microwave massacre. <laughs> so it's a trashy movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes and those people find when they know what they are, you know. Yeah. And they have an African American um um construction worker, uh, an old white construction worker, and they have kind of changed places because the the white one is teaching the African American one how to talk to jives and to be cool and it's just okay. a fun movie. <laughs> I'm here. I'm being That reminds me of that scene in the airplane. The guy, like, the do you speak jive, the old lady? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Funko Freddy. Hello, Freddy. So Jen Hello. says our theater was being pain when we tried to see part two, and never we never ended up doing it. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, cheetah. <laughs> Yeah. But now every time I hear Frosty the Snowman every Christmas, that cartoon Frosty the Snowman seeing have a holly jolly Christmas. That's funny. That's who I think of. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like when uh, Bob Clark, he does like the funniest Christmas movie with the Christmas story, and then he does such a dark Christmas movie, Black Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> So I'll say one of my favorite uh, movies, which is would be a drama, um, A Few Good Men with uh, Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. Uh, just a great story. I love a good like courtroom drama. I like a lot of true crime type stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's an excellent movie. What an amazing cast. Like one of the best ca casts I've ever seen in a movie you had. Uh, Demi Moore, Kiefer Sutherland, Kevin Bacon. What a phenomenal cast. Mm -hmm. And they're all like at their best, you know. And uh, you just can't get better drama than those courtroom scenes at the end, you know. <laughs> can't handle the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's iconic. When Jack Nicholson. Did you order that? the code red? <laughs> like. <laughs> You're goddamn right I did. <laughs> <laughs> so dramatic. I love it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that man can scare me doing anything. <laughs> yeah. True. That's one of his best roles, Jack Nicholson, even even though he had a smaller role, he was still like awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it made a really big impact in the movie. Yeah. Awesome pick, Sean. So Charles Cochran and Porky's, what does that um what is that referring to exactly? What? 
Yeah, Charles Cochran just says, and Porky's. <laughs> For good comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the gross out comedy they call it oh Bob Clark is what Charles is oh, he directed that? <laughs> nice he directed that oh my Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. Yeah. I've never seen it, but I know its reputation. Mm. Bob mm -hmm. Clark is very versatile, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting scene with Kim Cattrall. I'm not going to say the details, but. <laughs> Basement Blues watched Girls Night Out today from 1982. I enjoyed it and had never seen it before. Nice arrow release. I've never seen that movie either. I've heard about it. it's like an eighties slasher. Well, if it's an eighties slasher, it sounds like it's up my alley. So, mm. I love my eighties slashers. Me too. I saw that on USA Hell yeah. all night. Nothing like an eighties slasher movie. Yep. Yeah. With Rhonda Shear showing you how it's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did my share of that. <laughs> USA up all night, yeah. Well, we just lost Gilbert Godfrey. He did that, too. Yes. Yeah. So a movie that I'll bring up is probably one that no one has seen before, but um, it is not horror. It's actually from 1992, and a lot of people actually haven't heard about this, like, whenever I bring it up. Um, but it's like a sci-fi comedy adventure film, and it has one of my favorite comedic actors in it, John Lovitz, and it's called Mom and Dad Save the World. Is this familiar to anyone? I love it. Oh, Jennifer knows the movie. Yes! <laughs> Yes, I great. love John Lovitz. I have that on VHS. Oh, great. Great. So somebody knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah. John Lovitz in, in that movie is just everything as Todd Spingo. Uh, it's, uh, he tries to take over the planet uh, to, um, well, he tries to blow up Earth in order to make Spingo the most important planet in the universe. And upon doing so, he looks through his a giant telescope and he focuses in on um, Marge Nelson played by Terry Gar, and uh, he's really attracted to her so he wants to uh, bring her back to his planet but in doing so he also brings the husband unexpectedly and things go off from there and it's just really funny and uh, the effects are really amazing I think they are practical effects uh, from the uh, early 90s uh, especially the killer mushrooms down in the dungeon and uh, things like that. It's just a really fun movie. If nobody's seen it, uh, whoever hasn't seen it, I really recommend uh, Mom and Dad Save the World. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I do like John Lovitz. <laughs> From back in the you know, SNL days. Yeah. Yeah. Another one I really like John Lovitz in is... Um, is uh, Rat Race. Uh, oh, yeah. Anybody seen funny. that movie? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that had a great cast, it's too. Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. Rowan Atkinson, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and he kept falling asleep everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. So let me catch up on the chat a little bit here. That kind of reminded me of like Cannonball Run. Remember those movies back in the day where they had like 
these huge cats and they're all in the big trees and the... yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Bert Reynolds and So Patrick is saying Ron Shear was awesome. I guess that's um, USA Up All Night that you're referring right. to. Uh, yeah. Charles Cochran, I'll pass on most 80 slashers. Ooh, Charles. What? Dude. <laughs> that's completely okay. Um, I'm fine with that, but I love my yeah. 80 slashers. <laughs> uh, Jen says, I liked Rhonda, but Gilbert was always my favorite <laughs> host for Up All Night. Yeah, Gilbert Godfrey is just, you know, he was a really good comedian, really cool guy. No doubt. And of course, he voiced Yago in uh, Aladdin. What's that? He read one of my letters on air. No, sh no kidding. Me oh, proposing nice. to him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> And That's cool. Send me a T-shirt and two pictures of himself that I still have. <laughs> oh, cool! So Echo said, "Rat Race reminded me of it's a mad, 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 mad world." Uh, that's because oh, yeah. Rat Race was actually based on the movie. It was kind of a loose remake of it's a mad, 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 mad world. So. Oh, I didn't realize that. It also reminds me a little of um, Midnight Madness huh? with Eddie De Deason. And oh, I don't believe uh, I've seen that one. Yeah, Michael J. Fox was in it. It was his first movie. Um... That that nerdy Eddie Deason, <laughs> um, and the, the guy who played Flounder, Flounder, yeah, um, from Animal House. That was a good movie. It it was groups from the college that were trying to get a prize. Interesting. Uh, when you said flounder, I thought you meant the fish. <laughs> yeah, so did I. <laughs> what about you, Trench? Are you in here for you yet? Oh, um, well, well, my my favorite movie of all time is is The Goonies. I really love that movie, and I think it's just the. Uh, a classic that that holds up and is kind of timeless in its own way although it is very of its time but it's just a lot of those things like you still see kids like that to this day that kind of fit the stereotypes in a way or have those attributes and it's just yeah. a fun movie mm -hmm. yeah oh, absolutely it's definitely a fun movie Question. Yeah, I love the Goonies as well. I, I that's one of the movies that I grew up on, and you know, mm -hmm. one of the movies that also has a really great cast. I mean, you've got Corey Feldman in there and Sean Astin, and um, a very underrated uh, character actress, uh, Anne Ramsey, uh, mm -hmm. playing Mom Kelly, uh, one of my favorite characters in there, and of course Sloth. Who can forget Sloth? Yeah. And um, yeah. it has an excellent soundtrack as well. Oh, yeah. And, and the kid that plays Data know. is acting again. Oh, my bad, Sean. No, I was just going to say Cindy Lauper did the uh, music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That music so video is great. Oh, yeah, it is really great. So, so you, you said Data is the... acting again? Yeah. The, the guy that plays Data is doing a new... He did a new movie. He also was short round in uh, uh, Temple of Doom. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. back. Wow. That's cool. That's been a long time, I think, then, for him. Oh, yeah. 
Right. I know for a long time that there was a talk of uh, doing a sequel to The Goonies and everybody was kind of involved and then it didn't happen. It's just one of those movies that every few years it pops up that they're going to do a sequel. And then sadly, um, um, Richard Donner uh, passed away. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's really any point to doing a Goonies 2 now. I would have liked to have seen it. Something like uh, the original cast members and then they have their own kids and somehow they, the original cast members work into the plot would have been the best way to do a sequel to that movie, I think. But I just don't think it's going to happen now. I don't, I don't want to see it, like, especially with like some of the actors like Feldman and stuff, how what they're doing. I do. I do not want to see a sequel. Like I just. Yeah. 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 That. yeah <laughs> no. That guy's just nuts. Yeah. Like I don't. And then what are they going to do? Get a new actor for Sloth or some people say Sloth would too be old and they'd be like, they have to kill Sloth. And it's like, no, th just leave it alone. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They might, who knows? They'll probably end up remaking it at some point. So. They've done yeah. a lot of that. stuff. They've done a lot of stuff that's been influenced by that for sure. Like Stranger Things reminds me of Goonies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Luckily, for sure. My favorite comedy ever made can never be remade because it's too politically incorrect. Ooh, what is it? Revenge of the Nerd. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> mhm. Mm I used to love that back in the day. Like when they, they run over the potholes. Pothole. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Bone says everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. Is that one of your favorite movies? <laughs> uh, I know that's a new movie with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and. <laughs> What do you have there, Jennifer? Uh, Revenge of the Nerds tattooed on my arm. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, okay. That's awesome. That's dope. Well, th that's some dedication for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's your favorite character? Booger. <laughs> Booger. And I'm safe. I say I'm safe in that it can never be remade. Yeah, you're probably right about that. I mean, based yeah. on. True. Yeah. Not if it was to be true to the, you know, original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to change a lot of things up if they were going to do that today. Yeah. Like that guy, oh, what was his name? Ogre, the big bully guy. And he like mm -hmm. goes to the bathroom and he pees for like an, a half an hour. <laughs> like, <laughs> so this is interesting. Mister Bones is saying that Data is actually in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, the new movie that uh, is out now, which also stars Jamie Lee Curtis. I've been hearing a lot of things about that. Mostly positive things. I'd actually like to see that movie. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know Jamie Lee Curtis was in it. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, dang. Now I've got it. But she's under a lot of prosthetics, and she doesn't look uh, like herself. She's she's very much in character mode in this movie. Hmm. Right. That's good. Uh. Jin says, I don't know if it would be my favorite, but I really love Dumb and Dumber. The bit with the bird always puts me in a good mood. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a silly that's a silly film, but I will admit that I I I enjoyed Dumb and Dumber. Uh the sequel maybe not so much, but Yeah, it's fun. It's definitely a funny one. Yeah, sometimes you just kind of have to watch this, turn your brain off, have fun movies. Yes, exactly. I just have to write down the name of that movie because Data's in it. I don't care about Jamie Lee Curtis. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't care. (laughs) He has the pinchers of power, man. Andy helped Indiana Jones. I mean... Yeah. Temple of Doom was a lot, a lot of fun. It's the, it's got to be the funnest mm-hmm. of the uh, Raiders movies. It's my favorite. Out of yeah. the, yeah, it's my favorite too. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite too. See, now a lot of people hate on. Uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, but I actually like parts of that movie. Um, m- mostly for the fact that, of course, it's Harrison Ford, but also uh, John Hurt. Uh, I love John Hurt in, in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't think it's as bad as people say. Uh, the nuclear uh, explosion or whatever it is, and he hides in the fridge. A lot of people uh, <laughs> uh, 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 point that out as something that wouldn't... Uh, Fly actually, but hey, you have to suspend your disbelief. I mean, you're watching a movie. We do that all the time, right? True. I like the monkey scene where Shia LaBeouf is swinging with the monkeys because <laughs> they're monkeys. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. You have to spend a lot of suspend a lot of disbelief when you know when the sword fighting on top of the those cars and like the dudes doing like a split. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charles said one of the greatest films of, ever made is The Burbs. Um, that is a great movie. It took me a long time to mm-hmm. actually watch that. Um, probably about two years ago is when I finally got around to watching it. And I was sorry that it took me so long. I really enjoyed that. Not a yeah, bad it's one. great. Oh, my bad, Sean. I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to freely admit I'm a fell dog fan. I fell under the okay. spell in the '80s, and I have stayed there. <laughs> Okay. I mean, hey, there's 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 a lot of Corey Feldman movies that I enjoy. I mean, most notably, um, The Lost Boys. Um, I met him at a convention oh, a few yes. years ago, and uh, he signed my Lost Boys poster. He was very very awesome, very cool. Um, you know, one of my favorite encounters with a celebrity, really. Nice. <laughs> what, what was his deal with trying to Where? be like Michael Jackson though like later on when he started growing his hair like Michael Jackson dressing like him trying to sing like him <laughs> yeah uh, I got Corey Feldman made a lot of my childhood, a lot of movies growing up I watched had Corey Feldman in it. But Corey Feldman as an adult, for me, is very, uh, yeah, I'd rather just watch his movies when he was younger and leave it at that. Well, that's how I kind of see a fan is. (laughs) Exactly. Although he did do a movie where he played like this um, vampire, and it, it was an interesting movie. Um, the Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood. 
Oh, there was a there was another one. I think he's like a, a I think it's supposed to be like a drag queen vampire. It was it was a performance for sure. Huh. It happened. Drag queen vampire. Yeah, it's like a newer movie. I forget what it's called. It's not very good. But he's memorable. Oh, I don't care. I have to be in the strike queen. Vampire. Huh. Yeah, I'm doing I think, I think it's movie. Corbin Nash. I think it's called Corbin Nash. Hmm. Never heard of that one. It exists. It exists. Uh, unfortunately, so does Busted, which he wrote and directed. Don't don't watch it. Don't don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Soft core porn. <laughs> oh jeez. Ben Grimm uh mentions Joe versus the volcano. I have not seen that movie. It's pretty good with uh Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Oh, okay. Cool. It's I like Tom Hanks. I can check that one out. It's kind of the forgotten one in the trilogy they did there. Yeah. Must be. And I enjoyed it more than the... What is You've got mail. I enjoy yeah. Joe versus the Volcano more. Because it had more action in it. I didn't... I was like... Bleh. It wasn't as sappy with the romance, so... Yeah. Uh, favorite kaiju movie um, Godzilla of course <laughs> that would be for me anyway the original Godzilla for me it would be Godzilla versus Mothra nice that's mine too Ding. classic is King Kong a kaiju? <laughs> I think so. Because I'll probably go with the original King hmm. Kong. But a uh, close second would be Godzilla versus King Kong. Because I, I just love the... I love King Kong. The original one? <laughs> oh, yes. Of course. Gotta go the original. He has, a, he has electric powers. Like, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome movie. And I love how yeah, he, the rabbit hair moves on, on King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I love when Godzilla like drop kicks him, whatever. Psh, like, and he knocks his ass down. Hello, Ethel. Thanks for uh, coming by. So, um, Ethel says, uh, from the 13 originals, what about Manos, the Hands of Fate? Um, so, Ethel, are you saying yes. that's one of your favorite films of all time? Oh, it's great. It's got Torgo in it. <laughs> yes, I love War of the Gargantuans. I had heard about that movie for so long. And it was pretty recently when I, I think it was on a streaming service, maybe Tubi or something like that. And I started watching it. I only got about 15 minutes in and I had something else to do. So I had to shut it off. But um, I don't know exactly how, like how it's looked at in the community. Like, um, is it, is it one of those so bad that it's good movies or is it so bad yeah. that it's bad? Yeah. It's <laughs> bad. It's good. It would fit that pretty well, I think. Torgo is our lord and savior. He will save humanity. 
<laughs> like Torgo is awesome. Well, I have to finish watching that then. Um, they have so Ben Grimm says they have a puppet version called Manos, the Hands of Felt, uh, which is uh, <laughs> interesting as well. I still haven't seen that. I gotta see that. I've got Toe Wars. Felt. Mangoes, the cans of fruit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Apple. War of the Gargantuans. Uh, that's I haven't seen that either. What's that about, Grim? Uh, ben. Uh, so another movie that um, I would like to talk about that uh, doesn't get talked about too much. I don't think it's. A John Waters movie, and that is Serial Mom. Um, I absolutely love Serial Mom. It's one of those movies that I got into horror in the late 90s with Scream. And after that, I, I watched like a whole bunch of horror movies, and Serial Mom was one of those. And I just love Kathleen Turner's performance uh, in that movie. It really makes it. And it it's funny how it is... It is really a horror film, but it's disguised as a comedy, and this, the cast is really, really good, and you have a young Ricky Lake in there, and I always found it really cool that, um, oh shit, what's that actor's name, um, who, who was also in Scream, um, one of the killers from the original Scream. Oh, Matthew Lillard. Yeah, I always found it interesting that Matthew Lillard was in uh, Serial Mom two years before Scream, and he plays basically kind of the same character. He works at a video store, and he's really into horror films, huh. and uh, so that connection is really cool. And there's 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 some gory stuff in there, uh, too, but there's also some comedy, and it's just a really fun movie. Sure. I do enjoy that movie. That's I true, didn't though, even recognize doesn't... him as Matthew Willard, though. Wow. Hmm. Another movie that people don't seem to like that I like is Clash of the Titans, the original. Oh hell yeah! Oh, I That's like a that. Great movie. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. Oh, wow! Oh, you gotta love that old, those old Ray Harryhausen effects and stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. beautiful. Yeah, like, yeah, the stop motion stuff. Yeah, I love that stuff. That's badass when yeah. he fights Medusa at the end there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I get picked on a lot for liking that movie. <laughs> I can see where what? people might find it cheesy, though. I don't know. I think the remake is worse. No offense to people that like the remake, but they just crapped all over it. It looks ugly. There's a lot of browns and grays, while the original was very bright and colorful. The right. remake very dirty and dingy in most spots and I just I don't get why they did that. It's not cool. True. Yeah, I agree with you there. So Ben Grimm said the monsters in Gargantuans are Frankenstein and his brother. Uh, so that sounds interesting. <laughs> and um, Ethel says it's great. Giant Frankenstein versus Giant Other Frankenstein. Yeah, basically. It's the sequel to Frankenstein Conquers the World. Oh, okay. So they I'm learning a few things here. 
they just trash shit. They trash everything, fighting through the whole movie, you know. Well, I'll mention one of my favorites that kind of doesn't get enough love. Some of the, A lot of times the sequel gets more love. And I'll, that's First Blood, the original Rambo movie. Oh. It's, uh, it's my favorite action movie of all time. Yeah, <laughs> that's tied with Terminator 2 for me. I can't choose between Terminator 2 and First Blood. They're just both so good in different ways. Yeah. yeah. I just like it because it's more grounded. It's a little bit more realistic, you know, where they kind of go over the top in part two and after that. <laughs> yeah. It's just this. And I love, the, I love the fact that he's really not the hero per se. He's like basically terrorizing this town. You know? <laughs> he's kind of a slasher. He's taking <laughs> yeah. them down one by one. I don't know if he, I forget if he kills them, but he is, like, hunting them. They think they're hunting them, but he's hunting, you know, he switched it. Right. It's so good. I like the end where he kind of breaks down and is crying and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's very powerful. Yeah, it really is. I'd take that over Terminator 2. First blood. Nice. That's it's it's uh, just interesting because, you know, he goes through real trauma, you know, from the war, and it makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. he just snaps, you know, this guy pisses him off and he snaps, you know. And then the... This bad releases the badass, the killing machine, you know. The... Yeah. Same thing with the original Terminator. I prefer the original Terminator to part two. I know I love part two though, don't get me wrong, but I guess I just prefer the badass killer Arnold, you know. <laughs> I get that. I get that. I, I yeah, just I like the know. arc Sarah Connor goes through in part two. But um yeah. part one is awesome as well. My bad, Jennifer. You didn't do anything bad. Oh, I thought I cut you off. My bad. No, you didn't. No. Oh, okay. But certainly, two was great for the effects. It was so groundbreaking, you know. You can't deny that. The CGI was some of the, like, groundbreaking at that time with the liquid metal mm -hmm. and all. Oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> some of that looks better than some of the things they do today with the CGI, but... <laughs> some of it, yeah. Yeah. I always say CGI when you could appreciate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I much more prefer it when they blend the CG with the practical effects. Like to en yeah. like, uh, yeah, that's what I believe CGI should be used for to enhance your practical effects, not to to totally replace them. Um, yeah. like one thing that that I that I will say that um, and this involves Disney. Um, how for a period of time they were remaking a lot of their old animated classic films into live action. Um, but the one that really didn't make any sense to me and the one that I did not watch or, or want to see at all was um, The Lion King because uh, it's just CG animals. I mean, it, it, <laughs> there's, you know, they're replacing um, the magic of old school animation, hand-drawn animation, with CG that's okay, but why bother? You know, I just don't get it. They I should have had it. people in suits. <laughs> that been cool. Yeah, that would have been interesting, Trenchy. That'd be fun. 
<laughs> just a dude crawling around, <laughs> a lion, like a, like a lion. Yeah, that'd be funny. <clears throat> I agree, Basement Blues. Yeah, once you get after Terminator 2, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it might, for me. Oh, we lost uh, Jennifer. Oh, no. But I think she's back already, so let me just check. Hello. Hello. I can poke you there. So, Collector Man, what's a great comedy that you love? One of your favorite comedies. Hmm. You know, one of my favorite comedies, and it's it's an it's an acquired taste of the character itself is an acquired taste. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite comedies is uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> um, I just think, uh, directed by Tim Burton, I think every scene in that movie is totally memorable, and it's so quotable, uh, especially when Pee Wee has um, basically the whole town down in his cellar, and he's going through all the evidence, and he's going through like. Um, um, you know, H and I and L and M and he gets down to Z and everybody's like hot in there and everything and uh, they all start talking and he and he like turns crazy all of a sudden and uh, just all the it's like a road movie and it's it's just a whole lot of fun in my opinion and especially uh, when Pee Wee believes that Francis has stolen his bike. And he uh, comes up to his mansion and uh, kind of yells at the doorman, where's Francis? And uh, the doorman says he's having his bath. And Pee Wee says, oh, really? Where are they hosing him down? And that whole scene with, uh, with him trying to basically drown Francis in the bathroom and in the pool in the bathroom and things like that. Uh, yeah, just a really fun movie for me. Definitely. And just came to Francis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Till them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Large Marge thing is one of the standouts, yeah. And that, that tequila uh, dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Those shoes were something else, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ben Grimm says character. deep in the heart of Texas. Yep. <laughs> and yes, the Alamo does not have a basement. Yep. <laughs> Came all that way just to find out that Alamo doesn't have a basement. Yeah. yeah. Sad thing. You know, before he did that movie, he was in like all the Cheech and Chong movies. <laughs> Paul Rubens. Yeah. Mm hmm. And one of them, he was Pee Wee. And uh, doing the stand-up thing, I would uh, forget which one it was. <laughs> so 
So what about you, Sean, since you asked me about uh, my favorite, one of my favorite comedies? Uh, what, what, what's one of your favorite comedies? Uh, I have to say Caddyshack. That's a good one. <laughs> like, just talk about a movie, like, with all these great comedy, legendary comedians, and they're just all at their best. They're just amazing. They're all great. <laughs> Bill Murray, Rodney Dangerfield, Chevy Chase. They're all great. <laughs> like, And Ted Knight almost steals the movie, and he's not even... Well, I guess he's a comedian. We did a couple TV shows. Mm -hmm. But I just die laughing like when uh, when the guy's about to hit the, the last pun. He's like, well, we're waiting. <laughs> 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 the face he gives is just priceless. Oh, he takes out his special club. Oh, Billy Baru, Billy, Billy, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bill Murray's uh, awesome in that. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting yeah, Bill Murray's awesome and everything. Was my favorite in that one. Uh oh, watch out, Collector Man, in the chat there. Yep, I'm working on it <laughs> right now. Um, oh. It was lightning in a bottle because when they tried to do the sequel, it was terrible. <laughs> you said the sequel was terrible, Sean? Yeah, you never saw a part two with uh, uh, it was Jackie Mason. Ugh, it was terrible. Dan no, Aykroyd. I never, I never saw a part two. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd instead of Bill Murray. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. But Ronnie Dangerous. Oh, yeah, and um, Ethel mentioned. Hmm? Sorry, Jennifer, did I cut you off? Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mention that um, Ethel mentioned that Paul Rubens was also Spleen in Mystery Men. Uh, very true, and that's a really <laughs> underrated movie, I feel. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that was Yeah. One of my favorite comedies is Baseball. I don't know that one. Baseball? Baseball? It's just called baseball? Space. Ball. Oh, space balls. Okay. Oh, space balls. Okay. <laughs> that is okay, great. Yeah. yeah, that is classic. <laughs> Mel Brooks. Yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> John Candy was in that. Yeah. Played bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mug. <laughs> Plus, Rick Moranis says that. We are fit. obviously having some technical issues, at least on my end. Couldn't see anybody for a minute there. Use the shorts. <laughs> Yeah, that movie's just a classic. I don't have my ring. <laughs> that the scene where they do Alien is is like probably one of the funniest scenes in the movie where they they did the alien scene <laughs> and they combine it with the frog from the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. The alien is dancing around with the top hat. <laughs> <laughs> 
and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Classic. And uh, Ben Grimm mentions Pizza the Hut. Yeah. 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 I'm a big oh, fan yeah. of, of a lot of uh, Mel Brooks's films. Yes, I love the great outdoors. Mm-hmm. Big bear, big bear, chase me. (laughs) (laughs) He's standing by the door and the bear just busts right through. (laughs) Donnie's at the restaurant trying to eat the the big steak, the old 76er. Yeah. (laughs) I'm aware of that, Charles, and they are pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah, the Great Outdoors. That is a good one. Um, I enjoy that one. Uh, Dan Aykroyd is in that as well, right? Uh, with yeah. John Candy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's amazing to me that he can Dan Aykroyd can play the sweetest guy in the world, or the meanest guy in the world. Or <laughs> well, the most annoying guy in the world. Yeah. In that movie. <laughs> yeah, the, the bat scene is, is absolutely classic. Yeah. So another film that I absolutely love is a uh, actually a John Carpenter film. I love a lot of John Carpenter films, but the one that I want to pick out and talk about is Big Trouble in Little China uh, because oh, yeah. it's it's just it's just a fun movie, and I I'm a fan of fun movies. And uh, this movie is basically everything. It's an action film. It's a comedy. It's a horror film. It's you know, it has Asian lore. Um, it, it's really interesting. I think, and I think it's cool that it's always perceived that um, Kurt Russell or Jack Burton is the hero of the movie when actually uh, Wang helps out a lot more. Uh, one would uh, actually think Wang was the hero of that movie. But there's just so many classic lines and the... Um, James Wong, I believe is the actor's name, who played um, uh, who is that character? Lopan. Uh, and uh, Lopan isn't in the movie that much, but he makes a really big impact. Yeah. And I just think the effects are really good. And especially towards the end, when um, Lopan is killed, and one of his uh, minion guys gets so... Um, mad that he blows himself up. He like <laughs> inflates himself and blows up. Uh, that's really funny. Just some really fun stuff in that movie. It's just a, a really fun ride, that whole movie. Yeah. It is fun, yeah. <laughs> Kurt Russell just wants his truck back. <laughs> it's, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like his only motivation in the film. <laughs> Ethel said, Carpenter is my favorite director. Well, very cool. He's one of my favorites. Absolutely. He would be mine. I I don't think I've seen... Oh, did you? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a John Carpenter film that I didn't like. Um... What was the? Uh, does anyone recall the last one that he directed? Um, I think it came out two thousand and eleven, wasn't it? Yes, yes, the ward. Thanks, uh, Sean. I 
I actually enjoyed that one too. Uh, it's definitely not one of Carpenter's best movies, but um, I enjoyed it for the most part. It wasn't terrible, like a lot of people seem to uh, say. Yeah. Even though he is my favorite director, I do feel like he fell off the rails. Like after, uh, I'd say the the last one I really liked was Christine. Probably like anything after that, I'm not a huge fan. I can't stand vampires. I can't stand Ghost of Mars. Like any of those. <laughs> It's like he peaked early for me, you know. But yeah, a lot kind of. Love, a lot of people love vampires and and a couple, some of the like Big Trouble in Little China. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I thought it was fun. It's not one I go back to very often. What about um, Prince of Darkness, Sean? Do you like that one? Yeah, yeah, that was really good too. Underrated, underrated. Yes, very underrated. I still have to see it because I've seen the other two in the trilogy. I have, but I haven't seen uh, Prince of Darkness. I've seen parts of it, but not the whole thing. I I do enjoy vampires, but yeah. I think it was the cast that kind of saved it. The choice of the cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pick of the cast. I like James yeah. Woods. Yeah. He's the main bad vampire, right? That was, like, running the vampire gang or whatever. Well, James Woods is, like, the guy trying to kill them. Like, hunting. he's, like, the vampire. Oh! Hunter. I got confused. My bad. He's the good guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cute one. I'll probably say the the one that infuriates me the most of his is Escape from L.A. Because I <laughs> love Escape from New York. I, I remember when I went to see it and I was so excited. I was like, what the hell is this? I, I like that one. <laughs> I know it's not great, especially compared to Escape to New York, but I don't know. I can, I can get down with it. It's, it's goofy and fun. Yeah, L.A. I've only seen once, like when it first came out. And it's definitely not as good as uh, Escape from New York. But there's some fun stuff in it. I can never get past when he's like surfing and stuff. And it looks, it looks so no. fake like the background. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <clears throat> I'm full on camp. Let's go watch good night, Charles. Thank movie. you so much for stopping by. Hi, Charles. Night. Yeah, I haven't watched it since I saw it in the theaters. So it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. That was a put down. <laughs> that was a down for me. <laughs> well, um, if you want to see an action movie with surfing in it, uh, like, you check out Point Break. Like, Point Break's definitely what, where that to go good, with That is a good one, actually. <laughs> yeah. The original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. I okay. go with Patrick Smoothie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So we were talking about kind of so bad, um, they're good. Um, good night, Echo. Uh, Echo says they have to watch a Wild Eye movie, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Echo. <laughs> I 
But uh, we were talking about uh, kind of like. We were kind of talking about uh, So Bad That They're Good uh, movies uh, earlier. And I actually did a watch stream uh, with this one. And you, Trenchy, were involved. And uh, that is Troll 2. Uh, I think it definitely oh, yeah. deserves the title Best Worst Movie of All Time. Uh, Jennifer may not like it, it seems, <laughs> but uh, I love it. I love the cheesiness of, like, the score and uh, the character of Credence. It's just it's just so over the top, and the fact that they are not trolls, that they are actually goblins, and the <laughs> town is, is goblin spelled backwards, and... It's just a lot of fun in the popcorn scene, and I don't uh, even think it was supposed to be a troll. I just have a lot of fun. Just, they just changed the name of it to troll or something, didn't they? Yeah, it was never meant to be like a sequel to the original movie. They just used the troll name to kind of gain more attention and kind of you know try to get more yeah. box office, I guess. Which I don't know how successful the original troll was at, at the, but uh, you know to want to try to uh, get on that train, but um, yeah, I love troll too. It was great. Oh, I God. love it when the gram. Oh my bad. Uh, troll one is one of my favorite creature features. So oh, yeah. when they came out with Troll Two, it was like hate, hate, hate. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't me. First one had Sonny Bono. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Do my heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even that was kind of a so bad it was good, but not as extreme as the second movie. Well, you technically had the first appearance of Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 yeah, because the, uh, the main character is in the same time. And that's also the same actor who played Atreyu in The NeverEnding Story, which I also love. Um, you know, after horror, I really love oh, yeah. the fantasy genre. And, you know, I really love The NeverEnding Story. I think those effects really – this is what uh, kind of is crazy to me sometimes that – I don't know if it's just me looking at things through nostalgia glasses. Uh, you know, maybe some of you can uh, give me some insight on this. But sometimes older films from the 80s that are using practical effects or sometimes if they're um, a little bit uh, not convincing, that at least they're still there. They're still a physical object and they're still um, in the mm -hmm. scene that is being filmed. And it just feels more real and more organic. And I love all the effects in The NeverEnding Story. I think they all hold up very well. I mean, Brock Biter... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, look, at, look yeah. at that stuff. I mean, that's amazing stuff. Um, stuff from that, as well as other fantasy films like um, The Dark Crystal uh, around that you know, same time. Really inventive stuff and, and really awe-inspiring. And it, it takes a lot. I mean, it takes a lot to film a regular film, but when you're using puppetry and animatronics and all that other stuff, it's a real big feat and it's 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 really cool mm -hmm. when those movies come out so well. Yeah, it's oh, a lot sure. more creative, you know. Yeah. I I wear the creative. same glasses you do, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same glasses. I have the nostalgic glasses when it comes to um movies from the eighties. Me know. too. Yeah, well, legend, glad to, I'm glad example. to know I'm not alone. <laughs> Talk about practical makeup effects. The 
you know, Tim Curry and the legend, man, that looks sick. Oh, hell yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, absolutely. Legend is a great movie. Uh, I know this doesn't hold up as well as some of the others, but I still love Kroll. Like, I, I, I love, that. I just think it's a fun mix of sci-fi and fantasy. And then you have a Cyclops as a good guy, which you don't get very much. So I do, I do appreciate that. <laughs> that was a fun one. Yeah. I really need to see that one. Um, I saw that one for sale at, like, Walmart maybe two years ago with the new slip covers and stuff. And it was, when I was, it was one that I was going to pick up, but I didn't. Yeah, I think it's underrated. I mean, I guess the plot's a little wacky at times, but I still really enjoy it and think it's unique and very... Uh, it took a risk because it did something very different than a lot of the other fantasy movies were doing. Well, my favorite is the Beastmaster, <laughs> Mark Singer. That is so <laughs> much fun, man. Doesn't quite hold up as well today, I guess, but I don't care. I still love it so much fun. You got this Conan like dude with his little ferrets, Kodo and Podo, <laughs> fighting the crazy <laughs> wizard guy. And the... <laughs> yeah, I saw that like a couple of years ago, and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good movie. Yeah. Like, it's fun. Yeah. I love how they like they, they show these monster guys that are they're in the dungeon thing and they just look like these heavy metal guys with studs like Judas Priest or something. <laughs> like they're supposed to be scary monsters. Whoa. So what does everyone think of the Masters of the Universe movie? Uh you know, like the one from the eighties? Have you, have you seen that uh, one, Sean? Even then, I thought it was cheesy. <laughs> oh, you thought it was cheesy? Like, I was expecting it to be like the cartoon with all yeah. these great characters, like, you know, Man at Arms, and and the, it didn't live up to the, the cartoon for me. So I was expecting to see him riding the, the tiger thing or whatever it is. It didn't have, like, great special effects. It had terrible effects, really, you know. I didn't care for it. <laughs> yeah, the effects weren't that great. But I really thought that Frank Langella... Uh, I really did like him as Skeletor, though. Skeletor was cool. Yeah. It's a fun I movie. I really got into them when I was younger, so I don't have that nostalgic kind of push them now like get me another Howard the Duck and I'll go running towards it <laughs> yes <laughs> I agree didn't he show up in one of the like you know post credits of one of the Marvel movies or something yeah one of the guardians yeah I was like no way <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, I didn't even see that. That's a so bad, it's good, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think it's yeah, Oscar worthy. That's a great movie. See, I saw um, Howard the Duck for the... I didn't see the whole film, but I saw it on TV. I think it was on, like, HBO um, a long time ago. So I kind of caught it in the middle, and I was like, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> uh, I, I just didn't uh, really get it from that point. Um, but I am a big fan of Leah Thompson, so I need to really uh, watch watch the whole movie. So my thing is, is I don't think there's anything technically wrong with it. Maybe Tim Robbins is overacting. You can argue argue that, but besides that, the acting's pretty good. The music is good. The effects are great. I just think it's the plot and the fact that it was promoted to children, even though it's a it seems like an R-rated comedy because there are people having sex and there's a lot of like R-rated jokes, but it's promoted to kids. And I think 
I think it was just promoted to the wrong audience. If they just made it an R-rated comedy, yeah, I think yeah. it would have been. I think it would have been better. I still love the movie, but I think it would have been better received. But I just, I don't think people were ready back then the, that you could make a a talking duck movie for adults. But they did have Fritz the Cat, so I don't know. True. And like within the first five minutes of the film, I saw it on, you know, this, you know when you had those, those your oddest goal for the summer. It was one of those movies that you could buy for the summer and mm -hmm. go to at the theater. And like within five minutes, you see a, a duck in the back with a, a, a kind of real looking brass with feathers on them. But, you know, um, <laughs> you know, um, I was sitting there going, what? <laughs> So when I came back when I was older and <laughs> could understand all these things, I I liked it. Yeah, sometimes that happens too when you're a kid and, and, and things just fly over your head and then you watch mm -hmm. them as an adult and you're like, oh, wow, that's what that meant or, you know, that's what that scene was going for or, or what that joke was about. True. Mm -hmm. See, Howard the Duck was ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was a, a pioneer. Time. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Ethel. Masters of the Universe was fun. You had Dolph running around and Principal Strickland as a tough guy cop. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it was good casting. They might as well get Ivan Drago to play He-Man. I mean, that's the closest. It would be better than Arnold in a blonde wig. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with that, with, with him being the character. It just didn't look yeah. up to, like the cartoon for me. I was just expecting a whole bunch of wild, crazy effects, and yeah, it was me in the eighties. I I was watching um, the Garbage Pail Kids for <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons, so that's the movie I watched. When I was little, I liked that movie. <laughs> I I that. That. Even I, like I skipped that back. I was like, "This looks bad." <laughs> that, oh, that's something I think is so bad it's good, even though I've seen Lee Gross. Uh, <laughs> my juvenile humor. Uh, quivers, you know, it goes, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> when I was in high school, that was like the, the hottest thing, though, the cards, you know. I still have my card. Oh my God. Do you? <laughs> yeah. I used to love them. <laughs> Hey, you never up, throw Jim? things away. Hi. This could be work money. Hello. Hey, Martin. How's it going? Um, And yes, the spammers have been out in droves tonight. Hey, Martin. Sorry about that, Tristan. Oh, it's okay. One of my favorites, so bad it's good, is um, I didn't realize, I guess, how bad it was, but <laughs> Bride of Reanimator. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I guess it is def- technically inferior to the first one, but it's so much fun for me. Like the dude, the headless guy with bat wings on his head <laughs> flying around. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. That's a I, I like it better than the first one just because of all the weird creations, the finger with the eyeball, the yeah. like people at the end, the conjoined people, and all those other just it was it was great. <laughs> The dog with the hand that comes out. <laughs> and he puts the guy's arm together with the guy's leg. And he's like, it's so obvious that's like a prosthetic. But Jeffrey Combs makes it just like yeah. sells it, you know. <laughs> he like moves it around. Cool, cool, Martin. Nice that you're spending some time with the family. That's good. And glad you're doing well. Bet he's going to be a star student if he isn't already. Oh, hell yeah. Like in the honor role, you know? Yeah. Valedictorian. Yeah, Martin comes off as a good student, like a straight-A student to me. I don't know if that's true or not. He could say that, but... Uh, but he also says, I prefer Bride to the original Reanimator. The first one nice. is fantastic, but the sequel has so many interesting concepts, both in terms of effects and story. Very mm-hmm. well put. Love it. I agree. Um, another one of Stark Garden's films I feel is over underrated. I know he didn't direct the sequel, but he directed the first one on uh, Reanimator. But he also directed a movie called Dolls, and I think Dolls is really good, but nobody really talks about it. Yeah, that's true. That's one you don't hear about too much. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's like a perfect haunted house film, but with no ghost. It's like really well done. Nice. I haven't seen that one yet. I gotta check that out. Oh yeah, it. It's like it's got a fairy tale vibe to it. Um, I think you'll like it. It's it's very good. Have you seen Dagon? I think I got that at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Have you oh, watched nice. it yet? I haven't seen it yet, though. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. The Fiend likes it. <laughs> I love Castle Freak. Yeah, Castle Freak is a really good one. Castle Freak. Didn't really love the. Didn't really love the remake though. I've I didn't. Heard, see it. But... Which one do you prefer, Sean? Oh, the original by a landslide. Oh, okay. I mean, I actually haven't. I haven't seen the uh, remake. I've heard it's just I've heard so much bad about it that I didn't bother. I still haven't tracked down the original. I've only seen the remake. And it didn't really uh, impress me. Yeah, but you got to check out the original. You got Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton together. Ooh. Uh, that's pretty disturbing at parts. Like, it's got yeah. some really good disturbing scenes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, Martin, I could make you a mod, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Oh, are you on a computer? No, I'm not on a computer. I'm on a phone. Oh, so yeah, you can't the, do it from a phone, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, on a laptop, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or even like a but, tablet. Certain tablets but, can do it, too. Is anyone still seeing the um, the spammer stuff yeah. like in the chat? I mean, I could tell you deleted it. Yeah, we can still see it for the StreamYard chat, but in the regular chat, it should be gone. Okay, yeah, because I've been just won't see it. trying to keep up and blocking them and putting them in timeout and stuff like that. You good. I think you're doing a good job. You're, you're getting them pretty quickly. Thank you. So yep. um, I'm kind of going to lump these two together since they're, they're two Batman films, uh, but they really had a big impact on me. And those are Batman and Batman Returns. Uh, those are two of my favorite mm -hmm. uh, films of all time. I love the uh, gothic atmosphere that uh, yeah. Tim Burton brought to those movies. Um, these days, it seems like the first film is not looked at as fondly as returns whereas uh you know a few years back it would seem that uh people prefer the original but i've seen some people say that the effects from the original movie don't hold up that well but i just find like miniatures and uh practical effects and stuff like that really charming but i actually do prefer batman returns over the original batman even though i really love jack nicholson um I just think that mm -hmm. Michelle Pfeiffer and Danny DeVito as the Penguin and Catwoman were perfectly cast. And mm -hmm. I also love that Christopher Walken is in there. Mm -hmm. And it just has a really good story. And it's really interesting. And the whole thing, you know, with Selena Kyle and um, Bruce Wayne and it's set at Christmas. And a lot of people say that they're uh, favorite action Christmas movie is Die Hard, but I always say my favorite is Batman Returns because they often forget it's a Christmas <laughs> movie. And um, Ethel just brought that up. Yes, I, I, I love walking in that movie and DeVito. <laughs> they did great. Mm -hmm. It's like a slimy yeah, little bastard. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. I love that Burton got to do his full ver vision, and that's why I kind of put it over the first one, because in the first one, there was a lot of studio interference, but in this one, they're like, Burton, do whatever you want. And he did, and it's beautifully insane. You go, he definitely yeah. goes. Old Tim Burton in the second one. <laughs> yeah. He has an old back. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And and Batman Returns really influenced the uh how the animated series looked, which I'm also a fan of. Yeah, that's true. Uh that, that started soon after Batman Returns. It kept that uh gothic Gotham atmosphere like the Tim Burton Batman films. And Martin watches Batman Returns, Edward Scissorhands, and Nightmare Before Christmas every December. And so do I. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. He loves Tim Burton. That's a look. Nightmare Before Christmas watch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome, Jennifer. <laughs> I actually love the original. I'll be honest. I love the original movie better. Okay. <laughs> I guess because I'm not a big Tim Burton guy. Right. <laughs> I, I like that it wasn't full Tim Burton. <laughs> I mean, you did have Jack Nicholson as the Joker, which was fantastic. Oh, hell yeah. 
I guess I like that it was a little more colorful, like comic booky, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a much more colorful superhero movie then. So I'm very interested, Sean, to hear your thoughts on uh Batman Forever and Batman and Robin then. If you if you like the more colorful um <clears throat> Batman Well, I guess uh, Batman Forever has that, but it lacks the characters, you know. <laughs> and Val Kilmer, I didn't think was very good compared to Michael Keaton, for sure. Not even close. And I guess I thought they were. I thought Jim Carrey was just too over the top, and I didn't like how they. They made Two Face almost like another Joker. Like that's not his character, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that is true. I thought he looked cool, but I didn't like. That. And I was surprised. I thought Tommy Lee Jones would be a great choice, but not really. <laughs> um, uh, if he played that character like he did in the like he played his character in The Fugitive. It yeah. would have been way better if he wasn't trying to outdo Jim Carrey because I guess he was trying to out wacky Jim Carrey. I don't know why yeah. any human would attempt to do this. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he tried, and yeah, because if he played it serious and only Riddler was over the top, I think that would have been an interesting dynamic. Like he could have been the yeah. straight guy. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, word is that uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey did not get along well uh, during the making of that film. Uh, oh, really? Tommy Lee Jones was no fan of Jim Carrey, and he made that very apparent on the first day of shooting. Hmm. Um, so maybe that's why he tried to kind of outdo Jim Carrey, because because uh, yeah. he didn't like maybe him. yeah, and he was trying to maybe uh, <clears throat> be more of the center of attention of the movie. <laughs> trying to and Martin Lee Jones jumping on top of a car singing <laughs> Cuban Pete and I'm not seeing that <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah I thought it was so um, cheesy yeah. when they were like talking about how Batman makes his entrance I'm like really that's what you're talking about <laughs> his entrance was better <laughs> <laughs> So, Anther wants to know if we have seen the Batman yet. And no, I haven't, but I really, really, really want to. I'm a huge Batman fan, so I really need to see the Batman. I've heard a lot of good things about it. And the fact that you thought it was phenomenal is um, really cool. I don't think Jennifer liked it too much, though, did you? Um, I saw it. I went. I didn't give it a chance. I went in there angry. That oh, you went in there angry. The vampire uh... was playing Batman. <laughs> so, it needs another chance for me. He's he's a good actor, though. If you look past Twilight, he's done other good movies. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, Twilight yeah. wasn't the best. But I, I would say try to give him another chance. He's not that bad. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, we can't hold Twilight against him for the rest of his career, I don't think. <laughs> and um, I also like him in the lighthouse. So, I mean, it would be funny if we did, but we probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I have trouble uh, letting newer actors into my mm-hmm. fan club. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, no, you right. can't be this guy. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Like so when I try it, uh, when it comes at least, uh, Robert England and the remake mm-hmm. of Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> 
Yeah. And that wasn't bad casting either. That was just bad writing. I think if Haley did a decent job of what he was given, but that that movie yeah. was just oh no. Oh no, <laughs> and, no, no, no. Bad, oh. no, no, no. bad bad makeup <laughs> effects as well and, and full of bad CGI. Don't get yeah. please don't get me started on the Nightmare on Elm Street remake because well, I will go in like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing about the makeup, though, is that they said, oh, we were going to copy, like, realistic, uh, real burn victims. That's what they were going for. Mm -hmm. But the, they did it half-assed because they did the full look, and they're like, this looks too disturbing. We're going to tone it down. It's like, wait, no, no, wait, yeah, you're supposed to be way. disturbing. Yeah, <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it like CGI half the time his face? Yeah. Yeah, it was. They had those little like green dots on the face yeah. while they were doing the uh the filming so they could put it in. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that either where they what where they tried to make it look like a a real burn victim. Um that's not scary. Um to me that's more just um you know, a real uh, someone who has suffered real burns and and who looks like that is not something that is scary to me. It's more you know mm -hmm. something that's you know something that happened to somebody that's serious. But so I think in the original bad. series they went with a good idea by making Freddy more monstrous looking and more melted than more like an actual yeah. burn victim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. And Anthro said about the Batman films that he loves Jim Carrey's Riddler and a lot of the campy moments in those movies, but they're trying to be like the 60s show and the Burton movies at the same time, and they feel uneven. Yeah, that's very true. It does, it does, they do try to be both at the same time. And it was odd. That was very obvious in Batman Robin. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, they're just going all the way with it now. <laughs> um, Let's have them climb up the buildings with um ties. <laughs> After the dog, their hates and oh my goodness, yeah. I think the villains, it's sad because the, the two main villains, I think, are well casted in that movie if they were just directed better. Because I think Uma Furman could do a good Poison Ivy if under a better direction. And if if uh, Arnold played um, Mr. Freeze instead of telling jokes, if he played Mr. Freeze like the Terminator most of the time when he's fighting Batman and everything, no emotion, just do the mission, you know. But then when he's alone with his wife, because the, the scene where he's crying with his wife is really good. I really like that scene. You feel for him. Mm -hmm. So if they just had him show no emotion most of the time like the Terminator and then had him show emotion with his wife, you know, I think that would have been actually a really good uh, adaptation of Mr. Freeze in a way. If done right. Instead it's still the, fun though. Instead of the ice puns. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I still like it. I like how they're they got the snow miser from uh Year Without Santa Claus and stuff, but yeah, I think it could have yeah, been done really like, good. Too loud. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, I think the reason that you went Oh my bad. <laughs> oh, you're okay. Um I think the reason that they did that is because they went with a lighter tone, more family oriented because after Batman returns came out, um, parents were a little um, angry at the amount of violence um, in that film and how dark it was. And actually they had um, McDonald's had a promotion with them where they did toys yeah. uh, in their happy meals for Batman returns and once they found out about the parents not being too happy about that film, they no longer would do Batman merchandise. So I believe the next Batman movie that came out was like um, Taco Bell or something did the merchandising or, or something like that. But 
hey, I was a kid and I absolutely loved Batman Returns. So the parents had a problem, but the kids didn't, in my opinion. <laughs> Did you see that show where they had the kids on there saying they were traumatized? And the one kid's like, I hated it so much, I saw it twice. And Terminator 2 is less scary than this. And it's like, oh, God. Hey, Michael, stop. Uh, thanks for dropping in. Um, Arnold embarrassed all... himself in that role. Um, what about when they all get together and put on the costumes and then you see, like, their ass up close in the leather, <laughs> in the leather outfits and the... like okay <laughs> yeah some of the ice puns are fun martin but there's a there's maybe one or two too many of them for my opinion it totally botched bane's character oh like, yeah <laughs> what a difference between bane and that movie and bane and like the dark knight rises He's just like a big goof. Mm -hmm. It'll be oh, funny yeah. if they took the voice from The Dark Knight Rises and put it over the one from Batman and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Martin brings up the notorious bat nipples. Um, yeah. <laughs> How about when George Clooney pulls out the credit card? <laughs> yeah, the back card, the back credit card. Never leave home without it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually good for a laugh watching it, but it's a bit, it's a horrible movie. <laughs> So Michael wants to know if anybody has seen Wanted with James McAvoy. I don't believe I have. Oh yeah, Angelina Jolie wasn't was in it, right? Yeah, Morgan Freeman uh, as well. I remember it having oh, cool effects, like when he shoots the bullet and the and you see it slow motion and stuff. Yeah. It's like their their big thing is their assassins that can like curve bullets. Mm -hmm. That's like their one main ability. And yeah, it was okay. It was pretty fun. I liked it. Since we're on the subject, kind of, of Batman, um, so I'll bring up another um, Michael Keaton movie that I really love, and that is probably one that everybody knows by now because I've always – I talk about it quite often, but that is Beetlejuice. Uh, Beetlejuice really mm -hmm. kind of informed uh, who I am today, uh, and – I loved that movie as a kid and the animated series as well. And the effects in that movie are so fun. Um, you have a lot of, um, of those uh, stop motion type effects and you have a lot of really great practical effects. And the story for me is really original and the actors, uh, Gina Davis, one of my favorites, uh, Winona Ryder is in the movie mm -hmm. And the excellent score by Danny Elfman. Uh, that movie is just really a classic to me. It's one of my favorites of all time. And surprising that they got away with a PG rating based on um, some of the language and some of yeah. the... Uh, I don't really, really want to call it gore, but uh, particularly the fact that when... Um, uh, Gina Davis's character Barbara has Adam's head cut off, and she's holding a knife. And when she's in the closet, <laughs> uh, hanging in the closet, uh, yeah, really surprising that it was PG. But um, great movie. And when oh, they're yeah. coming back to life cool on the table, too. Too. yeah. 
and Catherine O'Hara's character is really fun. I'm a big fan of Catherine O'Hara in just about everything. I like some oh. of the effects, like when Gina Davis like pulls her face apart into the huge like mouth or whatever, <laughs> and the <laughs> eyeballs. Yeah. The eyeball hands. So creative. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the eyeball hands. And um, of course, you had uh, Sylvia Sidney in there as the afterlife caseworker. Uh, loved her character as well. And Michael Keaton's awesome in that role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like and a lot of people were. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, nothing. I was just going to say, I love the part when he's. When it, at the end, when his head shrinks, <laughs> he's still talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, Beetlejuice is up there. Your dinner party when they're steaming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a great scene. Yeah. Uh, I also love, I haven't seen a live performance of it, but I really like the musical as well. I think I've, I've seen, I haven't seen the musical itself, but I've seen clips of it and I've listened to the soundtrack and I think it's a really good uh, reimagining of the uh, original source material. Mm. And I, uh, the songs are really catchy. Yeah, I agree. I've seen clips and um, heard some songs from the soundtrack as well, and um, I really like it. I'd like to see a full version of that. Oh, yeah, because the, the movie is <laughs> fantastic, and I like how they were able to make their own thing, but also kind of capture the spirit of the original mm -hmm. and mix it with the cartoon as well. They mixed aspects of the cartoon. Um Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to look that up. I didn't know they were doing that. Yeah, but that's another movie like you were saying before, where they're always talking for years about making a sequel and like never gets off the ground. Like they're always talking about it, though. Yeah, I don't think they'll do <laughs> it right. Because they'll make Beetlejuice the hero. Watch. They'll make Beetlejuice a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's the no. bad guy in the movie. I know. The villain. They would do something stupid like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to see... <clears throat> I don't think we're ever going to see that sequel. It's just mm -hmm. been talked about for too many years, too long, and I think the time is pretty much past. What I would really love to see, and I'm sure if Martin is still here, he would agree with this, is a great physical media release of Beetlejuice. Because up to this point, every single physical media release of Beetlejuice has been free of any special features whatsoever, except for three episodes of the animated cartoon. And that is absolutely inexcusable. Uh, that is one of Warner Brothers' most popular titles. Uh, as far as their catalog titles, it sells well every time they put it out. A new version, a 4K, a Blu-ray, an anniversary edition. There's really no reason why they haven't put the behind the scenes, the interviews. You know, especially while everybody or mostly everyone is still alive. They should really get that stuff, you know, in a special edition. I would love a commentary, too. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Yes, Martin, manifest it into reality. <laughs> Tell Warner Brothers. Mm. Everybody go to Warner Brothers. Tell them we want our special edition of Beetlejuice. <laughs> Surprised they haven't done it. Like they've done it, for, they've they've done special features for more obscure films. You think they could do it for Beetlejuice? I know, that's such a well-known movie. Yeah, yeah. 
and next year will be the 35th anniversary. So I wow. think that next year would be the perfect time to put out something. Yeah. Makes sense. That makes you feel old. Why do I feel old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes these things feel like yesterday. <laughs> well, Michael one oh one five nine one wants to know what we think of this the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. Ooh. Well, I absolutely love them. I saw all of the um Sam Raimi Spider-Man films with uh, Tobey Maguire at the theater when they came out, and I I love them. Um, the Tom Holland movies I have seen the first two, but I have not seen um, what's the most recent one? Um, no Way Home. No Way Home. Yes, I have not seen that one yet, but I really really want to because I really enjoyed uh, the first two in that trilogy. I'd say it's by f much superior to the the other two. Yes. Oh, you would say that the final one is the newest one is is the best of the three easily. I think. Okay. I mean. Uh... I don't know if you heard about the big spoiler, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's not tell them. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear about any big spoilers. I try to avoid for as long as I can spoilers of any kind yeah. for movies that I intend on watching. Uh, like I don't even watch. I don't even watch trailers anymore. I seriously don't yeah. because too much of the movie is in the trailer. I want to go in and completely not know what I'm going to, what to expect. You know, you basically mm -hmm. know the basic story if you're following the movie or you're into the movie or if it's something, an established franchise that you already know. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't want to see much footage from a movie before I actually see the movie. Yeah. That's how it should be, really. I agree. I've only, um, my son has told me his review of it. Adventuresome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I love the Sam Raimi's. Oh, my bad. Oh, go ahead, Trenchy. Oh, uh, no, I was just going to say, I love the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. It's my favorite trilogy of all time. I, I love those all all of them even the third one all its flaws it's just it's something from my childhood that really impacted me and I just I there's nothing that even if they made a better movie there will be no better that that's my that's like one of my favorite versions of Spider-Man and I just love those movies and Garfield was good Garfield was decent and I'm not really a big fan of Holland, to be honest. I saw his first movie. I don't like how they treated the character. That's not Spider-Man to me, but um, I'm willing to see the, the third one uh, for reasons. But, um, but uh, yeah, I just I love those Sam Raimi movies. They're, they, it, what, what main, Sam Raimi is my favorite director because he made two of the greatest trilogies to me, which is the Spider-Man trilogy and the Evil Dead trilogy. Those are like two of the greatest trilogies of all time. And I just, yeah, I'm just a big fan. Nice. nice. Very cool. Yeah, my uh, bad. I didn't mean to go on a rant there. <laughs> Oh, you're good. I mean, you're passionate about movies, so that's great. We, That's what we want to hear. Well, I absolutely love the first two. I do have major issues with the third one. <laughs> oh, it has problems for sure. <laughs> it infuriates me. 
because <laughs> because of how good the first two are, and they're great. Yeah. I think they're great movies. Um, I mean, I remember just when I first saw the first movie in two thousand two, just I was just blown away. I can't believe this is happening. Spider Man on big screen. You know? They did such a great job with it. You know, like just seeing him crawl up the mm-hmm. wall and the the effects were really cool. You know. Oh hell yeah! And they did. I think they did the origins beautifully. Yeah, I remember seeing that in theaters, the first one, and it's just like seeing them swing across the screen for the first time. That was like, because I think I had seen a little bit of the '90s cartoon before, but that was like my first time actually, like you know. Seeing him on the big screen and seeing it come yeah. to life, and it was it was magical, right? And the casting was like perfect, you know, uh, like you know J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, like that's literally him from yeah. the comic. I mean, <laughs> you can't get any more perfect. Yeah. I also need to see the new Doctor Strange movie, um, Martin. I love the first Doctor Strange movie, um, especially Tilda Swinton. I'm a big fan of Tilda Swinton. But uh, Sean did mention, I think before you got here, that at least he didn't uh, enjoy it as much as the first Doctor Strange. I found that a little disappointing, yeah. And Michael, uh, the Iron Man films, I liked all three of them, and Iron Man is my favorite Marvel hero. I loved all the Marvel, I mean, all of the Iron Man films as well, actually. I love them too. I just mainly liked the first one. I didn't care for the sequels, really. But the first one was really good, yeah. For me, three was pretty weak. I liked the first one, but I'm not a diehard fan like everybody else is. I kind of prefer part two just because you have Mickey Rourke playing this crazy character, and you have Justin Hammer, and you have all these fun villains running yeah. around doing the crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Mickey Rourke has a bird <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why, but he does. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> and that's just cool with the other bird. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> but I think he's I think he's just perfect in that role though. He was like born to play Tony Stark, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never had any issue with any any of his performances as that character whatsoever. I think Robert Downey Jr. did a wonderful job at it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So everyone will have to let me know whether this movie that I'm going to mention fits in like the so bad it's good category or if anyone likes this movie. But uh, <clears throat> this is a movie from the early 90s that is also kind of a um, comedy horror uh, type of film. And it is called Nothing But Trouble with uh, Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. And mm-hmm. Demi Moore. Uh, this is just a really fun movie. I love Dan Aykroyd as the um, the Justice of the Peace. Uh, just hilarious. Um, well, hey, hey, hi, ho, ho! Look who's got front seats to the Mexican Hat Dance now. 
It's like, like spiders. <laughs> I, I just love everything about that. It, he's so manic, and the whole musical scene where he's playing the organ uh, when Digital Underground shows up, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's a very underrated movie. And yeah, it it also has some really great makeup effects. I mean, not only yeah, on Dan Aykroyd, but definitely. Uh, the the twins who are outside, who are wearing the diapers. I forget what their names are, but they're also played by John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. Um, yeah, very, very underrated movie, I think, that not a lot of people talk about, but I love it. It's a weird one. Yeah, very weird. It's so bad, it's good. Um, I agree with you totally. I love that movie. It's very fun. It's a fun that, movie. That introduces me to rap, man. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's your introduction to rap? <laughs> yeah. All around the world, same song. <laughs> that was the first one I ever saw Tupac in that video. Yeah. So he does a rap in the middle there, Tupac. <laughs> So Michael's saying uh, thoughts on the Home Alone films. The franchise stopped for me at Home Alone 3. Yes, I do love that movie, Falls and All. Me too. Well, my thoughts on the Home Alone films, I'm not a huge fan of 3. For me, Michael, the series stopped after 2. Uh, after that, they got uh, – I just didn't like them as much. But the first two are absolutely iconic. I absolutely love Home Alone 2 because you have – uh, the introduction, of course, you have Tim Curry in Home Alone 2. Uh, yes. He's in New York now. and He's at the, the Plaza Hotel. And um, also the pigeon lady, the, the kind of relationship between um, uh, Kevin and the pigeon lady is, is really good. And, yeah, I love the Home Alone films. And, of course, they're, I love the score because it's John Williams. He scored uh, both of those. And... Chris Columbus, I mean, one of the best directors of, of the modern era, really, uh, directed them. So, yeah, I love the Home Alone films. Well, what do you guys think about the Home Alone films? I've only watched one and two, and I love them both. Uh, two just got a little more of my heart because of Tim Curry. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But, yeah, I love them both. I watch them every Christmas. Yes. Must see Christmas films. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I definitely enjoy them. I was, I was like, seeing the, the wet bandits get their comeuppance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their asses kicked. And uh, and uh, no matter how old I get, I will I still laugh at uh, in Home Alone two when um, Marv is electrocuted in the basement uh, when he's trying to use the ink and he turns into a skeleton and and he has a really funny scream as well a very high pitched funny scream so all that together it's just hilarious I laugh every single time yeah. Yeah, I, I like the series. Um, I like the first one. I'm not as big in, on it as everybody else, but I like the first one. I actually prefer two and three over the original, and I, I just really love two, like with the brick scene and how he's saving Christmas for like sick, dying children. Like I just, uh, I just really love two, and I I got like a nostalgia for three because I saw that one when I was a kid, and I like how they have an electric chair in the movie. He made an electric chair. <laughs> it's like Jesus, mm. and he's like fighting terrorists. It's not it's not just petty criminals this time. It's actual terrorists. <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Mm. 
Michael asked if anyone has seen Young Sherlock Holmes. He watched it yesterday and thought it was a fun movie, very underrated. I don't I don't believe I've seen that. I was going to say yes at first because I thought you were talking about the um, the Gene Wilder movie, The uh, Adventures of Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother, but that's not what you're talking about. But no, I don't believe I've seen Young Sherlock Holmes. I saw it way back when it came out, yeah. I enjoyed it. Is that the but one I, can't, I don't remember a whole lot of it. <laughs> but it was fun. Is, is that the one with Robert Downey Jr. in it? No, that's oh. just Sherlock Holmes. A remake mm -hmm. of Sherlock Holmes. No, I didn't this, He was it. young like a kid, basically. Oh, okay. Solving all the mysteries, you know. It was fun. <laughs> Just like there was young Indiana Jones. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. That was a TV series, though. I wish they would have made a young Columbo. <laughs> young Columbo. <laughs> yeah, hey, I could see that. <laughs> Um, so Martin says he hasn't seen young Sherlock Holmes, but he does recommend Enola Holmes about Sherlock and Mycroft's younger sister. So would I. Uh, that's a very good one. It has um, Millie Bobby Brown um, from uh, Stranger Things cool. playing Enola Holmes. I also like the BBC TV series um, Sherlock. That was mm. on for a few seasons with Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. That was good. Yeah. But then that kind of went by the wayside when he started appearing in the Marvel movies. Of course, uh, I, I, those are probably paying a little bit more than than Sherlock, the TV series is. So. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I like when he did. He played Khan in Star Trek, uh, the second Star Trek one. It was basically a remake of Wrath of Khan. Did you have you seen that one? Yeah. Into the darkness. Into darkness. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've seen it too. <clears throat> So another movie that I would like to bring up as one of my favorites is Surprise, Surprise, another Tim Burton film. Uh, but that is one in which that I will admittedly uh, say that the effects, uh, like the CG effects, don't hold up that well now. Uh, but that is Mars Attacks. I just think it's a really fun film. And, and the fact that Sylvia Sidney is in this as well, as in she was in Beetlejuice. And she plays the grandmother, and she has that iconic line, they blew up Congress. And um, the fact that uh, the music that she's listening to, uh, which is pretty awful, admittedly, is uh, their only savior in saving themselves from the aliens because it makes their heads blow up. Um, and Jack Nicholson <laughs> plays both the president of the United States and this guy who owns like a casino or something like that. And there's a lot of cameos. Cameos abound in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Danny DeVito shows up, and um, um, Tom Jones is even in the movie. Um, so, yeah, I think Mars Attacks is just a, a really fun movie. It yeah. is a wacky movie. <laughs> yeah, and one of my favorite parts in, in, in the movie is when. Um, the 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 aliens infiltrate the White House, and um, mm. they um, uh, Glenn Close's character is standing under the chandelier, 
and they shoot down the chandelier and she's like, my Nancy Reagan chandelier and it falls right on top of her. But you can tell that it's a mannequin. I just love scenes like that where you can tell that it's a mannequin after someone gets hit by something. Uh, another example of that is um, Dracula Dead and Loving It with um, yeah. uh, Leslie That's Nielsen, who I also love. When he falls um, off of the ceiling after they close the door, um, and you can tell that it's just a mannequin that just fl- fl- falls flat on the floor. I just love things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, JKS. <laughs> well, I'll say my favorite that probably nobody would say is their favorite Tim Burton movie is Ed Wood. I love that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that movie, too. Yeah. I just love the story. Um this guy who makes the worst movies ever made. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's such an interesting character. And he's I love how he's so passionate about making these horrible, terrible movies. Like just can't help but follow him and, and believe in him and like go on this journey with him, you know. Yeah. yeah. I have that in my collection, but I have not watched it yet. Bad, Jennifer. Bad. And uh, Martin Landau is so good as uh, Bella Lugosi. (laughs) I love how he curses a lot. (laughs) Yeah. And he's a junkie, you know, (laughs) he's a drug addict. Yeah, that was such a great performance. Yeah. Like, it makes you want to watch those movies, because every time I watch that, I want to go watch Ed Wood movies. And then it's so funny when you watch them, like, yeah, these really are terrible. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but even though they may be perceived as terrible, it is still really admirable that he was so passionate about filmmaking uh, that, you know, he did everything that he possibly could to get his vision on the screen. So that's a feat unto itself, you know, to me. Yeah, exactly. It's inspiring for, like, you know, especially like an indie filmmaker or something, you know? Yeah. 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 Love how he tries to shoot stuff and he doesn't have the permission. He's like, hurry up, let's go wrap it up. Like a one take, okay? <laughs> yeah. And like, he gave Lugosi a second chance. I mean, they weren't the best movies, but like, nobody was like paying attention to Lugosi. They kind of threw him to the side and said he was washed up and. Ed right. Wood still saw him as Dracula and stuff and yeah. was like, hey, I'm going to give you the respect you deserve, which is which is admirable. Yeah, and I don't care what anyone says. Plan 9 from Outer Space is an amazingly fun movie, at least to me. It is. Oh, really yeah. Is. That was made by Ed Wood? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now I have to watch. Oh, you Ed have Wood. to watch the movie now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love I, I that I've watched that movie over and over. I love that movie. Planet Nine from Outer Space. I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love Bride. I think Bride of the Monster is one of Bella's best performances, honestly, in Bride of the Monster. Mm. He's great in that. <laughs> Like, he makes it worth watching because he's so, like, passionate. (laughs) (coughs) Like, I will create a a race of monsters. Things I learned from everyone tonight. (laughs) All right. But when you watch Bride of the Monster and and uh, and when uh, Martin Lando does that scene where he's like, "I would, 
I was, I was despised, you know, like, <laughs> and you see that scene in the movie, it's so funny. Yes, Fiend, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's true. So I want to talk about a um, underrated Wes Craven movie. Um, and that is... Deadly Friend. Um, oh, yes. Deadly Friend is one of my favorite Wes Craven films. Um, I love the whole, like, uh, relationship between Christy Swanson's character and um, now I forget the other character's name that moves in next door. But, um, uh, and the fact that he has this little robot. Oh, yeah, you have the nice cool version sean um <laughs> uh deadly friend had a really big impact on me um particularly of course we all know the basketball scene um yeah. when yeah. uh when vira gets hers and uh she gets hit in the head with the basketball uh but one of the things that uh people may not know is that um this movie is actually based on a novel called Friend, and it's 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 more of a romantic kind of novel. And uh, Wes Craven um, originally intended it to be that way, um, but then when he put his final version together and it went to test screenings, um, they were kind of shocked because at that time, of course, Wes Craven was most known for horror. He had yeah. already done A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, they were really wanting the gore. So that's why they went back in and put the basketball scene and a few other things. And um, apparently, you know, there was a director's cut uh, available, but we've never seen that. I would really love to see Wes Craven's original vision. But other than that, I just really love the movie Deadly Friend. And the fact that um, her father uh, was a drunk and oh, that yeah. was the reason for her demise and how... Um, he tries to bring her uh, back to life using the uh, chip from his robot. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really underrated Wes Craven movie, I think. A lot of people overlook that one when, they, when mm -hmm. they're talking about Wes Craven. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I agree, too. But I love that. I love this score too. It's a lot of fun. Like boop, bat, boop, boop, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, kinda. Yes, uh, Charles Bernstein, who did the uh, score for Nightmare on Elm Street, also scored Deadly Friend, and uh, I love both of those scores. And uh, Martin said the only thing that didn't work for him in Deadly Friend was the final twist scene. And yes, absolutely, that. Uh, that didn't work for me either. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But yeah, you want I wanted I wanted her to come back, you know. Because the way you see her starting to be more human, you know, like he recognizes him towards the end. He's like Yeah. Paul Paul? Paul? You know. <laughs> You want her to come back and then to get together and it'll be like so romantic. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm very interested in, interested to read the book and see if like the ending is different from the film. Right. Like I just find that movie so interesting because it's another one I had seen recently in a couple of years. And I like how they have, like, kind of this realistic kind of depiction of abuse, like the yeah. father abusing the daughter. But you also have this robot running around talking shit to people on the street. <laughs> and it fits. It works. They work together so well. I don't know how he did it, but he made it work. 
and he plays basketball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he mows mm-hmm. the lawn and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool thing to see when he when the robot mows the lawn. That was cool. <laughs> I like when he kills the the guy trying to break into the car. And you <laughs> see, <"Ugh." laughs> yeah. Yeah, Christy Swanson. Christy Swanson, that was like my first crush, you know, when I was a kid. Yeah, no, Christy Swanson was also in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Right, uh, which mm. I which I also enjoy, and that also has Paul Rubens, which we mentioned for quite a while back when we were talking mm. about Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. Yep. Riker Howard. Yeah. yeah. Who knew that would be like the biggest thing, you know, turn into a huge TV show? <laughs> I never watched a TV show. <laughs> I never got into it either. <laughs> it, was, it was a little goofy. What TV show is that? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, the TV show. Right. Okay. Yeah. I like both. I would say I like the TV show a little better because of the side characters, but the movie's really fun. <laughs> like, Pee Wee Herman as a vampire is, you know, that's, that already gives the movie five stars. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I kind of got into the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer when it was first on because my sister watched it all the time. And it was kind of interesting mm-hmm. to me, so I really need to like go back and 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 watch it and see what I think about it now. It's really fun. Um, it's re- I really love the side characters in it. I think mm-hmm. they steal the show. And Michael said, has anyone seen the film Slither from 2006? I saw the trailer, and it looks like a cool little creature feature film. I have seen uh, that movie. Um, it, 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 some scenes are a little cringeworthy for me, but I, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it uh, overall. Slither's fun. Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's pretty disgusting, though, just warning people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Certain things in in horror movies or any other movies, there are just certain things that I don't like too much. And I, you know, Slither has a few of those things, as well as the, the horror movie Teeth, if anyone has seen that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. That was one that kind of uh, um, destroyed me for life. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, even I though that even though that wouldn't happen to me, but it still scarred me for life for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so Martin just did a stream uh, talking Buffy with Trenchy and Brittany. Oh, cool, Trenchy, you were there. I saw that Martin had posted yep. that a few days ago, but um, I didn't. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to that stream. But I'll definitely. Um, catch it um sometime very soon oh yeah you good it was a, it was a fun time it was a fun little discussion yes when i found out what teeth was about that that went off my watching list i'm like going same no 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 um, I was disturbed by the idea of that movie for so long, but then I watched it, 
and I actually found it funny at parts, but that's just because I'm a sick, disturbed human being. But, um, <sighs> there is some really, like, like really disgusting parts on it, and there's some disturbing parts, but then, then there are parts that were, like, funny, but I would, yeah, it's not for everybody. It's really, yeah, it's a thing. Mm. <laughs> and it's people. based off of a real medical condition, apparently. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you may like it, Martin. You may like it, but it's a little too graphic for me. <clears throat> you might think that, uh, you know, um, you know, the guys are kind of getting what they deserve or, or whatever, but um, and like I said, that scenario would never happen to me, but I'm, it still disturbs me. Um, and, and one of the most disturbing movies that I've ever seen as far as horror also is Cannibal Holocaust. I've talked about this before. Yeah, I don't like yeah. animal torture. So. That's right. That, was, that really happened, yeah. Most disturbing one for me was I Spit on Your Grave. Yes. Yeah, I don't know one. why that <laughs> keeps getting made over and over and over again. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's kind of like um, Last House on the left for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I love Wes Craven, and he's one of my favorite horror directors of all time. But that is the film out of his catalog of films that I've seen the least. I've only watched it twice just based on the subject matter. Um, you know, I just don't like those kind of rape, revenge kind of movies. Yeah, because stuff like that isn't fun to watch. It's like disturbing and it gets to you and it's like not fun. Yeah, any movie that I have to, that I feel like I have to take a shower afterwards, it's, it's, it's not, it's not for me. It's, effect that. it's effective, you know, and it gets on these skin, but it's like not yeah. something I'm gonna go back and watch again, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the experiences, but I agree. Like they don't need to keep remaking it. Like the first one's good. Like if you want to be disturbed and go through that, like it's there in the original. Why? Why remake it? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that is weird that they kept, because they made a bunch of sequels to it, too. And, and it's like, why why yeah. do we keep doing this? I mean, the first one's good. I really like the first one. But, yeah. like, why why are we still doing this? I, I do agree <laughs> with Jennifer on that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, but, what, trying to cash in on it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, we got the point across. And also, um, when I was eight years old, my aunt and my mom sat me down to watch this movie to tell me boys were bad. So that, what? that's another <laughs> thing. You know, you, you get to see that when you're eight years old, too. And um, that's kind of, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. Why? Jesus. <laughs> I come from an odd family. <laughs> and, uh, mm. yeah. yeah. What are these people teaching you? Yeah. But <laughs> thankfully, I have stopped that and did not raise my son that way. <laughs> That's good. Yes. <laughs> You and me both, Martin, uh, we're on the same page. I will not watch a Serbian yeah. film either. I have heard things about it, and that's all I need to know. Yeah. Not watching that one. Uh, that's where I draw the line as well. Like, I've seen Cannibal Holocaust. I enjoy it for what it is. I don't agree with some of the practices, but I do think it's a good movie. But yeah, Serbian film, I, I won't watch that one. That's a little too far for me. A little too much. Mm -hmm. All 
I will say something like uh, that was distur that's a disturbing movie, but I thought it was really good was Audition. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But it gets it's it's got that kind of you know gets on these skin kind of thing and you're like ooh you know. <laughs> But you know it's a horror movie. It's not like something that's... Well, I guess I suppose it could really happen, but... When I first watched Basket Case, I was disturbed by it. Because <laughs> it was like, you... how can you be so mean to Belial? You know? Uh... <laughs> and now it's like, I love the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what about when you watch it now? <laughs> I love it. I love the movie. It's, I have all three parts, even though uh, uh, I only like the first one. <laughs> I remember I used to love it. I used to think it was like a fun, like kind of story. But when I watched it recently, I'm like, damn, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like Basket Case. I prefer Brain Damage. But, like, Basket Case is fun. I like to see the little meat person run around and kill people. <laughs> In stop motion. <laughs> the effects don't quite hold up today. No, they don't. <laughs> At all. It's no Clash of the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one scene where where he grabs the the nurse and like puts her in the drawer full of scalpels and she, she comes up with all the scalpels in her face. <laughs> yeah. Michael, I love Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It's an awesome movie. I love all the video game type references in it and the cast uh michael sarah uh is one of my favorites wasn't that like a graphic novel or something yes it was either a graphic novel or a series of comics uh And Anthro says, have you seen Malignant? Really fun James Wan movie. I have not seen Malignant yet. Um, I can't speak for the rest of the panel here, but I haven't. I haven't yet either. I nope. haven't either. My son has. I have. <laughs> Believe it or not, I haven't seen uh, Frankenhooker either. Oh, me neither. I need to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen Frankenhooker either. It's so bad, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love a lot of the early Peter Jackson horror films, uh, like um, especially Dead Alive. I really yeah. wish that Peter yeah. Jackson would come back and do another horror film. I know, um, right? Yeah, I love that that whole movie, the whole craziness of that movie, and the deranged mom. And um, after she passes away, he tries to you know keep her alive, and she turns into this zombie. And then the end <laughs> is really crazy, and there's this whole bloodbath involving a lawnmower, and <clears throat> Just a really, really great movie. It's crazy. It's nuts. Okay, Martin, I am writing that down so I will not forget. Um, 
it must be very good, and I'll take your word for that. What about the priest? I kick ass for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny too. Yeah. The baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that movie's crazy. Yeah, and when the when the mother gets bitten by that by that rat at the zoo, yeah. um, that's also a really funny scene. It's insane to think that he's the same guy that did Lord of the Rings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't be more di any more different. It's like this low budget ass movie and then you got this like huge movie with insane special effects and mil hundred million dollars yep. to make it. <laughs> you probably yeah, made... like how did that happen? I know, right? Like I'm wondering how that happened because you know, like you say, he went from this small horror director like, was there a movie between um, those horror films and Lord of the Rings that did really well that that propelled the studio to have the, you know, the willingness to let him take the reins of this huge franchise? Do, do you think it could have been The Frighteners? Because, like, that's the only one I could think of. I know it's yeah. not very well received, but it... I mean, it, I, I know a lot of people love it. I love it, and I think it's a very... I think that might have bridged the gap, maybe. Yeah, you're right about that. I think I think that is it. Um, but, yeah, I also love The Frighteners. I think it's underrated. It's certainly a bigger yeah. movie than... I mean, it had a decent budget. It wasn't like... Like an indie movie, yeah. like a small indie movie. Yeah, definitely had more of a budget than his <clears throat> earlier films did. Um, so Michael's saying, are you guys looking forward to Nope, the Jordan Peele film? It's got to be better than his last film, Us, but I loved Get Out. Um, I am, actually. I like um, where Jordan Peele is going. I think that, um, you know... As far as the horror genre goes, he's a very um, big influence right now, and I think that a lot of the themes that he brings up in his films are relevant. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Nope. So am I. Yeah, we'll have to see. It's promising. <laughs> mm-hmm. I haven't seen Us, but I really like to get out. Me too. It I felt like fresh, too, you know? Like something new. Hmm. Have you guys seen the Chucky series? I haven't seen it. <laughs> Not yet. I have seen the Chucky series, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, it was Ooh. one of those things where um, it was all over by then, and so all the episodes were there available for me to watch. But I, I liked it so much that some people like to – go on binges and watch like an entire series in one day or in one sitting and I, I kind of wanted to stretch this out a little bit because I was liking it so much I didn't want it to be over so quickly um, I, I like the references you know that were brought up um, you know especially like stuff from Seed of Chucky like Glenn Glenda and things like that were thrown in um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed the series, and it's been um, already confirmed that there will be a season two, which I'm really happy about. Nice. nice.
That's what I do with Cobra Kai. I binge watch it. <laughs> Every time yes, Martin, you do need to see the Chucky series. Absolutely, you do. You're going to love it. Please see the Chucky series. I guess I get some flack sometimes because I'm not the biggest Chucky guy. <laughs> I know so many people love it so much. Like I've never been that big into it. I was. I just. I just think. I just thought they were like fun slasher movies, but I don't take them seriously. But a lot of people take it very seriously. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, you like what you like. <laughs> yeah. A pin run that says "Want to play?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe in season two we may see Glenn Glenda, Martin. Um, not in the first season, just mentioned, but. I did not watch the show Heroes, uh, Michael, but uh, my sister was a big fan of the show Heroes. Yeah, Heroes was good. I, I liked it. It got a little wonky after a while, but it was it was it had good characters, enjoyable characters. What's up, Sean? I've only in season one of Heroes. I never saw it. Hey, Sean. Yes, yeah, Seed of Chucky was not very well received. <laughs> <laughs> but Method Man. <laughs> Yeah, there were parts of it that, that weren't so good, but overall, I enjoyed it just for, you know, a lot about the representation, I guess, of the Glenn Glenda character and, and all that kind of stuff. was was It was a good thing. I, I love hey, Sean. Seed because that movie's on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because of that. Is that the one with Tyra Banks on it? Banks in it? Or... I'm not sure. She's in Halloween Resurrection. <gasps> That's what I'm saying. Never <laughs> mind, never mind, never mind. Run franchise. <laughs> Run franchise. Also a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's unanimously a bad movie. I don't think many people uh, would would defend that movie. I have no idea why the hell she was in it. <laughs> Other than it's Tyra Banks. Let's just throw her in there. Yeah. <laughs> You're wondering why Tyra Banks was in there? Is that what, is that what we're talking about? In Halloween Resurrection. Um, I think it's it was just the fact that around that time they were they were using um, musical artists or um, hip hop artists um, in a lot of horror films like um, Halloween H two O for example had um, uh, oh shoot um, yeah Halloween H two O had someone who was a uh, uh, a hip hop star. Yeah. Oh. I can't remember. Yeah, but Tyra Banks was a model. She wasn't a hip hop artist. She was. Um, oh yeah. From yeah, yeah. America's yeah. Next Top Model. She was also trying to be a rap star too. Did she? I didn't know that. She failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> they they had Buster Rhymes in there. Um, yeah, that's who it is. I'd say Santa that's why. in our karate kid. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But that's probably why they put him in there is because LL Cool J being in H2O. Let's get another mm. cool rapper. <laughs> Sean Blue Digital currently watching Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, that was a fun one. Mm. Lots of action in that movie. Yeah, for sure. Well, another one of my favorite action movies of all time is The Road Warrior, Mad Max 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's freaking iconic. The thing I, the issue I had with Fury Road is it was almost felt like. Mad Max took a backseat to Charlie Theron's character. I'm like, this movie should be about Mad Max. Why is she so prevalent in this movie? <laughs> but, and I love, and I think Charlie Theron's a fantastic actress, and she was really good in that. But it seemed like she overshadowed him. You know? Called Mad Max. Not. Did you feel that way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and why is Tom Hardy taking the back seat? He's a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. It had some kick ass action, though. I can't deny that. <laughs> Yeah, I almost see that movie more like an experience than a than a movie. It's very much like an an experience from just the the way it looks and just the action and stuff. Yeah, because for me, Tom Hardy didn't even feel like the original Mad Max character. Yeah, like yeah. it just I. I still like the movie, but it 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 feels like it's still in the same universe, but at the same time, not. It just feels very different. I thought it was cool. They brought back, you know, the bad guy from the first movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the same actor. Yeah. Like taking iced tea out of Friday, you know. <laughs> so Michael is asking about the Fantastic Four films. Uh, he says I enjoy the first two films. The 2015 one doesn't exist to me, and that was horrible. Um, I only saw the first Fantastic Four, and to be honest with you, I don't remember much about it. So. Maybe someone else here can explain their thoughts on the Fantastic Four films if they've seen them. I thought they were terrible. <laughs> Never seen them. All of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, I like the first one. I haven't seen the Corman one, although I'm excited to see it. It looks fun. Uh, the second one was eh. and then the other one they did yeah it's better not to mention it <laughs> that, that one doesn't even deserve a mention ant four stick <laughs> yeah Can't even get the title right <laughs> i just thought they were too goofy but but then again i'm not the biggest Fantastic Four fan, even from the comics, I thought they were a little bit goofy, but that's just me. Right. Like the guy that the Human Torch flame on, like it's a cheesy. <laughs> and the the thing with his corny lines and stuff. I don't know. It's clobbering time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think they could make it make it a serious. Like I hope they they do when in the MCU. But 
I'd like to see a more series version. Like, yeah. Doctor Doom is an awesome villain. Like, they... I can't understand how you can't get that character right. That's true. That's the one problem, I think, with the the uh, 2004 movie, or mm-hmm. 5, I forget what year is he... Instead of this evil businessman, why not just make him the evil ruler of this country? Like, he rules an entire country. Like, right. that's cool. <laughs> and his country loves him. He's a dictator yeah. that's actually beloved by his people. That's an interesting concept. He's the inspiration for Darth Vader, basically. Well, yeah, I never thought about that before, but that makes sense. Yeah, George Lucas even said that, like that, that was one of his big inspirations for. Uh, Mike says thoughts on Morbius. I enjoyed the film, but it's not the best Marvel film and not as terrible as people make it out to be. I'd rather watch that over Fantastic Four 2015. Well, I can't speak on Fantastic Four 2015 if I would rather watch that because I haven't seen it. But I did see Morbius and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was pretty well done. Yeah. I'll have to check it out then. So you don't think it deserved the uh, flack that it got? <laughs> um, n- not so much. I mean, there were flaws like you can pick out of any movie, but not anything major to me that would – no, not anything major that I would say ruined the movie or was inherently bad about it. Yeah. I mean, they're calling it the worst Marvel movie ever, but I'm like, have you you guys seen Elektra or like Fantastic oh, Four? No. Have you guys seen these movies? Have you seen I, Elektra? I, I haven't even seen Morbius, but I know it can't be worse than Elektra. I can't. No offense to Elektra, but. Yeah, some people seem to forget about those earlier Marvel films uh, that were not very good. Uh, you know, since uh, everybody's kind of stuck on the newer films. Remember the 2003 Hulk? Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. yeah. That that yeah, one had I'm Jennifer Connelly too, right? Yeah. That was the one with Jennifer Connelly? No, that I'm pretty was sure. the one with uh, Ed Norton that that actually was one of the first MCU movies, The Incredible Hulk, which wasn't that much better. <laughs> oh, okay. But the 2003 Hulk had Eric Bana as uh, Bruce Banner, and uh, Ang Lee directed it, and it's freaking terrible. <laughs> the Hulk Thank fights you. air. At yeah. one point of the movie, he fights air. It's a fin. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I know it's the same. guy's power, but Jesus. <laughs> and the main battle at the end, he fights like these monster dogs or whatever. Like, oh, that's yeah. the best thing he's come up with. <laughs> like, that. I know in the TV show he fights dogs, but at least he fought a bear and a gorilla and other things. Not not just dogs and the silly putty that the military is throwing at him. <laughs> I know he gets caught in the silly putty. <laughs> it's so choppy too, like the editing is some of the worst editing I've ever seen. Like with the, with the split screens everywhere and I'm like, oh my god. What? The T V show? No, the 2003 oh. Hulk movie. There's it. There's Dude, I watched the TV movie. show all day over that. <laughs> like, yeah. I love the old 70s show. 
there's another movie I walked into that had no chance with me. That's not Lou Ferrigno up there. No. He is not going to flex his muscles and rip his pants. That's not Lou, Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> I think he had a little cameo in it. <laughs> that oh, is Jared not Sinbad of the Seven Seas up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you should give Morbius a chance, Martin. I think you might enjoy certain parts of it. But not Electra. Don't give that a chance. No. <laughs> but if you're going to watch an Electra movie, watch Daredevil director's cut. Like, that... Like that's actually I I'll, I'll stand up for Daredevil. I thought that was a decent movie. It's not great, but if you compare it to like Electra or like uh the 2000 Hulk movie, Fantastic Four stick, Catwoman, I mean it it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> yeah. The Halle Berry Halle. Catwoman. Yeah. I oh I God. still can't believe they made that that movie, that Catwoman movie with with Halle Berry, I would have much rather seen since at the end of Batman Returns, Selena Kyle was still alive. The uh, Michelle Pfeiffer version. I really mm-hmm. would have liked to have seen her show back up in one of the films or somewhere yeah. at some point as Selena Kyle again. Yeah. Anything would be better than that. We wouldn't have seen her play basketball like that. (laughs) (laughs) What was the other one you mentioned? Uh, That was really bad. Oh, I'm trying to think. I kind of list off a few. I mean, I forgot about Blade Three. Blade Three is another one. Yeah. Michael, I have seen the show Gotham. I watched it religiously when it was airing on, I believe it was Fox. Uh, I loved that show. Um, I think they did such a great job of having the characters of uh, Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle and, and, um, and others um, in sort of their teenage years before they became uh, the, the characters that we now know. I found the show very interesting. I loved the cast. And five seasons just wasn't enough for me. Um, I uh, I really loved Gotham. I think it, if it would have been on another network, it would have made it longer. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Yeah, Gotham was good. Okay, so um, oh, sorry, Jennifer, I I interrupted you. I think Fox is just going all reality TV now. Oh, that's sad. Mm Mhm. That's part of the reason why I got rid of cable in the first place, um, because there were just so many ch- um, channels of so many things that I don't, I didn't watch. Um, so now I just basically stream and stick to my physical media. So. Me too. <coughs> they canceled a lot of good shows, like um, 
One I've been rewatching on Netflix that I really enjoyed was Z Nation, and I think that got canceled too soon. I, I think they were able to end it on a good note, but like, still, it, it should have went longer because that was that was really fun. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. You good? So Martin is coming in with the facts. Uh, Daniel Waters, who wrote Batman Returns and Heather's, very cool, wrote a treatment mm -hmm. of the Catwoman movie. After it became the movie it is, he asked that his name be taken off the script. Well, that's very interesting. Um, I think I would ask that too, <laughs> to be honest. I'll give Halle Berry this. She did accept the Razzie for it, and she was like, yeah, this is bad, but I'll, I'll embrace it. <laughs> That was nice. Yeah. Yeah, at least she admitted it. Have you ever seen a movie called Lucy? Called Lucy? Yeah. Oh, with Scarlett Johansson? Yeah. Oh, the Scarlett Johansson movie. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've seen that. Yeah. I just I just saw it the other day. It was like stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it though. I did like it. Yeah, is that the one where she has like the prosthetic arm, like the prosthetic body parts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, Martin. Um, Sean is not supposed to say, I'll be right back. <laughs> Michael says any of um any of you heard of the show called Sweet Vicious? It was a show on MTV. It was a show about two girls who secretly act as vigilantes on campus that target sexual assailants. I have no idea about that. No, Never I haven't heard, heard of that one. Wow. Yeah, I gave up. Hey, Grande's graveyard in the house. Hello. 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 We're just shooting the breeze, talking about our favorite movies. Yeah, I know. I'm not supposed to say I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> the mistake so many of us horror fans make. Yeah. So that's a good question. Yeah, Grande's Graveyard asked favorite Tom Hanks performance, and he would go with Big. Um, so I'll let all of you answer first if you have a Tom Hanks performance that's your favorite in mind. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say... Oh, go ahead. My bad. No, go ahead. I was going to say maybe I would have to pick between, like, I really liked him in, in Money Pit when the, 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 the fridge or whatever, not the fridge, the bathtub falls through the floor <laughs> yeah. and he starts freaking out. 
But another one I really like, I really like him in a in a league of their own. Um oh, yeah. where he's like, You look like a like a penis in a tiny hat, and then they're like, You're fired, and then he gets all mad because I really like that. He's just a total asshole in that movie. Yeah, he's- and yeah. Castaway, I would throw in there too. I really love Castaway's performance. Mm-hmm. When he loses Wilson. Oh, yeah. That's sad, right? <laughs> Mine, my favorite of him is Money Pit. When he falls into, the, he's standing on that carpet. He gets stuck on the floor, the floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the guy he's supposed to pay off is at the door. I have to say, uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah, definitely a great one. I've actually never seen it yet. I I got to check it out. Yeah, I avoided it for a while because people would, like, make fun of me for not seeing it. So I was like, I'm not going to see this movie out of spite. But I've changed my mind since then. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's great. It's great. <laughs> it's My like favorite it. Tom Hanks movie. Oh, go ahead, Sean. I was gonna say it's uh, it's kind of a dramedy, drama slash comedy. <laughs> yeah. So um, my favorite Tom Hanks movie is um, Jimmy Dugan, A League of Their Own. Enough said. Um, nice. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah. I just I, I love Tom Hanks in that movie. And the, the funny thing is that I'm not a sports fan, but I am a, a fan of a lot of sports movies for some reason. It's just I, I don't know. I can't explain why. It's, I just I just do. Oh yeah, there's so many good sports movies. I'm I'm the same way, Tristan. I cringe when football season comes around because I know that the only thing everybody will be talking about. But there are some football movies that I love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Michael asks, what is everyone's favorite Will Smith movie? I'm going to go with one that's kind of unanimously hated, um, but I actually like this. I think it's um, a so bad that it's good category type of movie. And please don't hate me, anyone, but I'm going to go with uh, Wild Wild West. (laughs) Um, I, I, I... I saw that movie at the theater, and um, the other actors who are in the movie, including um, shit, I'm having a hard time thinking of people's names tonight. Um, Kevin Klein. Yes, Kevin Klein, and and the one that that was in the wheelchair is an, is another prominent actor and a director. Mm-hmm. Kenneth Bernag uh, yeah. played that character, and I thought he was really great. Um, yeah, in my opinion, it's a so bad it's good movie, so that's what I'm going for as favorite Will Smith movie. I don't know about anybody else, but... I have to say, uh, another movie that's not that well loved, I Am Legend. I thought he was really good in that. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Um I would probably pick iRobot. I really love iRobot. Um I like the idea and it's a pretty cool it's a very underrated uh sci fi movie. 
It was pretty good. I really liked it. I like I like it better than Men in Black and stuff. It's pretty uh, yes, underrated. Nice. Yes, Martin, and his character yeah. is delightfully de delightfully um, mean, and uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Martin asked, do we have favorite Kenneth Bernard movies um, that he loves Frankenstein, but um, his favorite is Much Ado About Nothing? Anybody have any favorite Kenneth Bernard movies? Well, I think he... Uh... You know what he was pretty good in was uh, the one about Marilyn Monroe, My Life with Marilyn or something, and he played Laurence Olivier when the making of uh, The Prince and the Showgirls. Pretty good movie. I don't know if I've seen that one. Yeah. It's kind of an indie. It's not like a huge movie, but I think she got nominated for for an Oscar. Uh, what was her name? I forget the actress that played her. She's a well-known actress. I'm I'm not that familiar with that director. Um, He's an actor slash director. He actually directed Thor, didn't he? Or one of them. Oh, Thor. yeah. <clears throat> I loved um, his adaptation of um, Murder on the Orient Express. It came out a few years ago, and it had a great cast, including Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, yeah. Loved that movie, and I'm really looking forward to... Um, the new Agatha Christie um, adaptation that he's doing. I forget which one it is. Um, it's Death on the Nile. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one. Death on the Nile. Too many spammers. Please go away. <laughs> they love you tonight, huh? Yeah, apparently I'm a spammer magnet tonight. <laughs> What'd you think of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? <laughs> it was all right. Yeah, from what I remember, it was it was good. Um, yeah, I liked it. It was um, Julia Roberts, wasn't that? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Robert De Niro. I'm glad you also liked uh, Murder on the Orient Express, Martin. Yeah, it's the trouble with me. I don't, I don't know modern, modern directors and actors as well. Mm. Oh, I don't know a lot of them by name either. I mean, I'm I'm way more of a facial recognition person than remembering yeah. a lot of these actors and actresses names, but um yeah. some of them stick out to you. Sly the Movie Guy, favorite action movies. Let's see. Somebody else might have to go first because the action genre isn't um, really one that I'm huge into, but I'm sure there are a few. Hmm. 
Hmm. Action movie? Mm-hmm. Or- yeah. Oh, Roadhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong mm-hmm. with Roadhouse. That's okay. Die hard, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, Lethal weapon. You know, I kind of like the um, the the uh, Taken films with um, Liam Neeson. Yeah, I thought they were yeah there were a few of them, but I think that that it was justified. I think they were all good. It wasn't like um, no real reason to make a, another sequel. I, I think they were all solid. So that's what I'm going to mention for action. Good choice. Oh, John Wick, uh, Sly, Sly the Movie Guy. That's a great trilogy. I love those two. Yeah. Uh, they made a newer movie that's kind of like John Wick, but different. I saw it recently. It's called Nobody. It's from 2021, I think. That's really good. It's like John Wick, but if John Wick was like a middle-aged man, like trying to like start over, but he, um, but he's just so like he's he's missing his glory days of like messing people up. It's like because he feels underappreciated, and um, let's just say there's a robbery. And his daughter's kitty cat uh, bracelet goes missing. So then he kind of goes on a mission to get the kitty cat bracelet back, which leads to the Russian mafia. It's a good movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he gets in a fight with the Russian mob. It's a Yeah, it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. I haven't had fun in an action movie in a while since I'd seen that. Yeah, Sly the Movie Guy brings up Speed from 1994. Yes, that's a good action film as well. I'll give you an absolute classic, Enter the Dragon. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Unleashed. Unleashed. That's another one of my favorites. That was Jet Li, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I usually end up watching that once a week. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. One of my favorites uh, also is Rush Hour. Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker. <laughs> I love those movies. Yeah, that's a good one, too. True Lies, 1994, Sly the Movie Guy says. That's another good one. Hmm. Very cool, Martin. Sounds like a cool double feature, Enter the Dragon and the Crow. He watched it with his dad to honor Bruce and Brandon Lee. Nice. Oh, cool. Can I... Rush Hour is classic, yeah, Grande's Graveyard says. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because Brandon yeah, Lee cool. started out trying to be kind of like Bruce Lee with like rapid fire if you ever saw that and showdown in little Tokyo yeah but then we did the crow that was something like really different I'm like this isn't like a martial arts movie like <clears throat> Oh, 
One of my Sly the movie guy? I'm not. Universal. What did Jennifer? One of my DVDs is staring me down and pick me. It's Universal <laughs> Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn. damn. <laughs> Sly the movie guy, believe it or not, I'm not really huge into James Bond. I saw the uh, Pierce Brosnan James Bond movies, and that's it. I haven't seen any of the Sean Connery uh, ones, or I saw one of the more recent ones, but just one. So I'm not huge on James Bond, but I don't know oh, if I, any of you are. Oh, I love James Bond. <laughs> I love James Bond. Yeah. I could watch a marathon like all day. I love my Connery. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Goldfinger. Oh yeah, Goldfinger is awesome. From Russia with there. love. Uh, yeah. Doctor No. Doctor No. <laughs> you only live twice. <clears throat> I love the Roger Moore ones too. I yeah. like Live and Let Die and Spy Who Loved Me and uh. Nice. Watch out, I have a license to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I will be back in just a moment, everyone. You good. Did he say it the right way? Say it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, Jennifer, uh, speaking of Van Damme, did you ever see uh, uh, Double Impact? <laughs> yeah. When he's did. like the twin brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was such a fun one. That was. And I'll admit that I have the poster of. Jean Claude Van Damme doing the split on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that one, but I love Double Team with Dennis Rodman. For some reason, he's there. Yeah. That that ending's one of the greatest endings in an action movie because it's so they, randomly badass. And they fight Mickey Rourke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun one, too. Um, there's also a Cyborg. Cyborg was good for Van Damme. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear of a weird boxing movie called The Arena? No, that sounds interesting. It was made in the 90s. Um, it was in space. It was made in space. They were, they were boxing in space. <laughs> and they would have lights on the different space creatures to, to make it so they would be of equal strength, and these these things with these these aliens would look so weird yet <laughs> ugly yet cool. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have that in my VHS collection. <laughs> Go 
wish you could talk all day about the Stallones and the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and the... Yeah. Then of course you got like Robocop, which Oh yeah, I love Robocop. <laughs> I even like two. I think two's like a pretty good contender for one. It just doesn't have the gore that one does. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the best uh, scene with the uh, Ed two oh nine when he goes off the rails. <laughs> You have two seconds to comply. <laughs> he fillets that guy. Hell yeah. That movie always reminds me of Chopping Mall. <laughs> the robots in Chopping Mall. I don't know why. Awesome. But you forget how brutal like Robocop is. There's some pretty nasty like gore and like when they when they first kill Murphy, you know, that's nasty. Mm-hmm. They blow his arm off and Yeah, like they essentially dismember him by shooting him and it's like Jesus. <laughs> And then the one dude is like melting at the end, <laughs> yeah. running around melting, and they hit him with the car, and it, it's just <laughs> like it's a like waste on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like getting smoothie on a wheel on a windshield. It's just he just splats, <laughs> and then they just run over him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my poor guy. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> Hello, all. I am back. Welcome back. You said it right. I guess, right? Right? That you. What was the difference between what he said and what you said? That made it right. <laughs> I don't know. Are you talking about Anthro's comment? I think he made a point not no, to say it Sean, the right way. Sean said, I'll be right back. And yeah. Yeah, saying you'll be right back is not is not a good thing. We learned that from Scream that that you shouldn't say that because you may oh. not come back. <laughs> oh okay. But okay. I said I'll be back in a moment, so I didn't say I'll be no. right back. So yeah, I avoided that. Said it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's the screen thing. That's why I didn't understand. <laughs> Joe, the horror man, is here. Hey, Joe. Hi, Joe. Thanks for coming by. Hey. Of course, Aliens is a great action movie. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Sigourney Weaver is awesome. No doubt. <laughs> what, do you, uh, speaking- what do you guys... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Sean. I was going to say, what do you guys think about the Avatar coming out? Finally. <laughs> um, I think it's way overdue, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it's like 10 years um, too late. <laughs> yeah, the first one was such a huge success and like, a, like the first big CGI spectacle type movie but it was really well done and it made huge amounts of money at the box office and then it's just like years go by and okay we might do a sequel and then it's all this time later and then they do a second one I just don't know how many people are going to (laughs) care I don't know how many people are going to actually 
put out the money to see it, but I still am um, very interested to see what a sequel would involve. So I'll end up seeing it. Me too. But imagine the money and the time that James Cameron put into it, and then if it fails, like, he'd be Mm -hmm. done. (laughs) Yeah. Like, that's the... That's one of the major things about movies these days, especially the superhero films. Oh, we lost Trenchy. Um, that they put so much money into the budgets, and then they're kind of uh, shocked when they don't make their money back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like for an example, um, the the newest Ghostbusters film, uh, Ghostbusters mm-hmm. Afterlife. Um, with the previous film, um, Ghostbusters Answer the Call, the one with the ladies in it, uh, they spent so much money making that film. It was like almost $200 million just to make that film, and it ended up not making its money back. And for the newer one, they spent, I believe, around $60 million, and I thought the effects were great, and I thought, you know, they obviously they got the original cast members in there, uh, but I'm still disappointed in Sigourney Weaver's cameo. First of all, um, in Ghostbusters um, Answer the Call, the one with the ladies, uh, of course all of the main actors had cameos, but they weren't playing their characters from Ghostbusters, which kind of annoyed me. And then at the very, very end of the movie, like at the end credit sequence, we got Sigourney Weaver, and the same thing happened in Afterlife. We just didn't get enough of Sigourney Weaver's character yeah. In, in in Ghostbusters Afterlife for me, but um, Ghostbusters is one of my favorite franchises, so that's why I brought it up. And I'm the person who went and saw it four times in the theater, um, running out bawling every time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the end. <laughs> um, Sly the Movie Guy, one of my favorite directors is Tim Burton. Um, I love I also love Guillermo del Toro. Mm-hmm. Um I also love Steven Spielberg. He's a mainstay. I grew up on a lot of Steven Spielberg films. Still love Spielberg. Um yeah. There are others, but, you know, those are the ones I'm going to name right now. Excellent choices. And someone brought up, yeah, Grande's Graveyard brought up Romero and Argento. Uh, Those are both great as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> yes, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick yeah. Favorite Twilight Zone episodes? Grande's Graveyard is asking. Ooh, um, I have a hard time. I have a hard time remembering the names of episodes. Um, so somebody wants to take this question first. Well, the Shatner nightmare at. 20,000 feet, was it? 50,000 feet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's my favorite one. Uh, my favorite, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it's with uh, the lady from Psycho, and she's at the bus stop. And uh, weird stuff keeps happening to her at, at inside the bus station. Like she sees like herself in the mirror, and then she talks to the guy at the front desk. Oh, you were just here. You were saying the same thing before, you know. And it turns out she's like a, there's a doppelganger of her following her around. <laughs> mirror image, yes. Uh, um, okay, take care, Martin. Thanks for stopping by. 
Really appreciate it. Bye, Martin. Stay frosty and fro. Um, uh, my favorite would be Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. But nice. another one I really like is the mask one where the guy's dying and he gives all the people the masks. His family who are like a bunch yeah. of assholes. <laughs> yeah. That's a weird that is one. A good one. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, I think I'll ditto Trenchy with that one. Of course, time enough at last with Burgess Meredith when he's, you know, he keeps mm -hmm. trying to read his book. No one will let him read his books. And then, <laughs> and then he gets caught in the thing and the whole world gets blown up and he has time to read his books. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all awesome directors, Sly the Movie Guy. Sam Raimi, Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, David Fincher. Absolutely. Wow. Favorite Tarantino movie? Hmm. I'll, um, I'll have to go to Hateful Eight. I really love the Hateful Eight. Nice. Am I getting this completely wrong, or did Tarantino direct? I don't remember. Did Quentin Tarantino direct Planet Terror? No, he directed Death Proof, the other Grindhouse movie. Yeah, oh, Robert okay. Rodriguez did Planet Terror, but they're like close yeah, friends. Yeah, so, yeah. Wait, he yeah. starred in the Planet Terror. He acted in Yeah, that that's right. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so does anyone else have anything that they would any movies or anything that they would like to bring up before we sort of uh wrap this up for the night? Um, I got one more. I think that's an underrated movie. I like to mention. Uh, it's called okay. Alpha Dog. It's an early two thousands movie. It's about a real. It's about this young kid. This happened in real life. These teenagers kidnap this young kid whose brother owes them money, and it's kind of crazy. And uh, it's an interesting movie because the kid actually likes being kidnapped because they, they party with him and stuff. And it's a it's a really sad movie about misguided youth, hmm. kind of, um, when, when they don't have good guidance and stuff and the bad things that could happen. And it's based off of a real uh, crime. Um, nice. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, the movie, but nobody really talks about it. I never heard about it before. I'm going to watch that. I saw it, actually, with uh, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> yeah, he's actually good. Like, it, it was, I was surprised he actually did a good job and Bruce yeah. Willis and yeah. You're right, it is pretty underrated. Yeah, I just I've always enjoyed it. I thought it was a very interesting movie.
Okay, well, I guess if everyone is in agreement, we will end things here for tonight. Um, this was probably my longest stream ever, uh, and it was really, really fun. And I really want to thank um, my guests, Sean Urshan, Jennifer Tochi, and Trenchy for uh, coming on. This was a really great time. I had a lot of fun talking with you and <clears throat> discovering some of your favorite films, uh, both within the horror genre and outside the horror genre. It's always nice getting to know people's favorites of things. And I would also love to um, thank everyone who showed up in the chat. Um, thank you so much for all of your questions and um, telling us all about your favorite movies and uh, some movies that we didn't even know about. So uh, we'll be discovering some movies that may become our favorites uh, that you've mentioned tonight. So, um, yeah, thank you, everyone, for coming out and... I'll see you very soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Peace out.